Okay, welcome everyone to our class in understanding the depth of Hashem's Torah. So we've started 3,200 years ago uh, at on Har Sinai, and um, we've understood a simple pasuk, which says that when a man damages another man, he has to pay with the best of his field. And we took it into the Mishnah, which spread that to all the Nizik and the, uh, the, the Arbaav, excuse me, and then the Gemara explained Takas and Sinas Shalom Kesev that goes, this law of Metav extends all the way to all the 24 and 26, actually 26. And then, and then we went to the level of uh, Abaya, who said, um, excuse me, after Rabbi Kiva said that this Metav is not a question of evaluation, and it's a question of what you pay back with. That was a big milestone in our in our understanding. So then Abaya came along and said, wait a minute, since Rebbe Kiva opened this uh, understanding to us, it's a question of payment, then that's going to conflict with the Pusik that says you can pay with Kesev and Shove Kesev. So we had five different answers on that. Two of them remained, one of Reb Papa um, and one of Reb Huna. So we went to the level of the Rishon, which explained the Gemara that, uh, one, what do they mean, and two, what's the Halacha? So, Rav Hunam, according to Rashi and, 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 and the Rosh, and, and uh, Rabbeinu Tam and Tosfos, holds that um, Kesev and Metav Aretz is your first um, obligation to pay back. In other words, you can't use a uh, metalphalin to pay back for your damage. And only if you don't have the kesev and the metalphalin can you use the, excuse me, the kesev and the karka, can you use the metalphalin to pay back. That was a big chiddush of Rav Huna. And Rev Papa disagreed, and he said, no, you can use any one of the three. How could you use any one of the three? Isn't there a contradiction between, oh, is that you? Is, isn't there a con, yeah. Isn't there a contradiction between having to give your best land, yeah. uh, which would mean you don't have to, you can't give uh, the worst metatolin. So uh, Rav Papa explained, really, if you look at it in the Bechina, a very important word, in the aspect of um, what is closer to money, that's what the Torah is saying, you have to pay back the Nizak with things which are closer to money, so num so you have money is the best, and metatolin is the second best, and and then you have land. Land turns out to be not so good because you may not get your money back because no no buyers around. So the Torah said, give your best land now. Whether well, that's equal to the other two or not will be our next level of discussion. Okay, so the way we learned uh, here's the riff and the rush uh, was that. Rabbi Papa said all three um, possibilities are equal. That means the master can pay with Kesev and Shavu Kesev and Metav Aretz. And the Ramah, the way we learned the Nemuki Yosef, said that there's actually a hierarchy. Bechat Chil, Kesev is the best, then Metav, and then Karka is the third possibility. And Namugi also said he learned that from Reb Papa, because everything, which is a spur, everything that's closer to Kesev is more preferable. And then uh, we had the Rambam, which only had a double layer hierarchy, which meant that you can pay with Kesev and Shevet Kesev equally. And if you don't have both, then you can pay with Metatlan. Um, so that was where we, we ended with the level of the Rishonim. When it came to writing uh, the halacha, the tour, the son of the rush, wrote that there's a preference for metatalin. So this led to a very serious discussion and a split between the people who wrote on the tour. Some people um, agreed with him, or agreed that's what he said, let's put it that way, like the Beit Yosef and the uh, Yeshushan that really when you pay back, the Nizak has a right to say, I don't want uh, your land, I want your metaltolin. The other people on the other side, the Bach and the Drisha, said no way. The, 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 the tour was standard 
riff rush that you can do what you want. Ah, why did he say that that you collect from Tathlin first? To tell you that the Maz the Nizak, I'm sorry, has no claim uh to Metav, even though the Pusik says it, even though Rav Huna would say that he has a claim of Metav over Metalton. We don't hold that way. We learn like Rav Papa. And that's what the tour was, was explaining to us, that the halacha is that Metalton is just as good as Metav, unlike Rav Huna, and halacha, if the Nizak wants and screams Rav Huna, screams Metav, we don't listen to him. So that was how the both the Bach and the Drisha uh, explain tour. So that was our, our problem here. What did the tour mean? Did he mean there's really a preference of metalpolin over Karko? Or no? He was just saying that the uh, Mazik can give metalpolin and there is no preference and you might think there is a preference because of either Repun or because of the Pasuk says metal. So then the Beit Yosef who comments on the tour writes the Shulchan Aruch. And in Shulchan Aruch, he quotes the Rambam Kimat word for word. So then the same people, uh, actually one of the same people, which is the Rev, Rev Folk, uh, disagrees with, uh, for instance, the Shach uh, as to what the Peshat is in the Shulchan Aruch. And he says that what I told you was Peshat in the tour, the the is really the Peshat in the Rambam. And uh, the Shulchan Aruch, when it came to writing the Halacha, Pesach like the Rambam, which means that that the the Masik is in control here. And so uh what is the Rambam saying that there's a priority of Metatlan over um uh land. Oh, that's because he's talking about a case where the base din is trying to decide what the mazik would give. And mostly the, because he's not here. So, and a mazik would rather give his metatlan than his land. So the base din, so din and base din, that when they have to do, decide not in the presence of the mazik, they decide to give metatlan over. But if the, over land. But if the mazik was here, he could give any one back. So that's how the smahus, again, uh, Rabbi Shua Folkatz, uh takes the Rambam and the Shulchan Aruch and puts him back into the standard camp of Rav Papa and the Rush and the Rif, which is the Mosque can give everything. So, the Shach. The Shach comes now and he's going to say uh, Rabbi Folk and the Bach, anyone who tries to impose um, the standard understanding of uh, Rep. Papa, which is the Mouse can give all three, is doing injustice to the Rambam, do, doing the injustice to the tour. Because the Rambam has a totally different shita. He's not using, he's not reading the Gemara like the Rabbeinu Tam and the Tosfos and the Rush. He has a different reading of the Gemara, and the course he has a different reading of the Gemara, he comes to a different conclusion. And the conclusion is that the based in asks the Mazik, okay, we have decided that you owe the Nizak money, uh, what do you have? Uh, the Mazik says, well, I have money, Metallica and land. He says, okay, so you have to give uh, money to the Metallica and not the land. If you don't have money metalton, then you give the land. So it means what it says, that's all, that there's a preference of a metalton over land. That's it. And don't run away from it. Ah, your concept of the Gemara comes through your understanding of the Rif and the Rush and the Tosfos and all those wonderful Mephoshim, but that's not the Shittas of the Rambam. The Rambam thinks differently. And I'm going to show you and prove to you that he does. So. That is the work that we are into now, and we have another colorful diagram here. <laughs> okay, here's the tour, and here's the Shulchan Aruch. And just here, to spell out what we just said, the Beis Yosef is in blue. He interprets the tour to say the Yad of the Nizak is El Yona. The Yishushan agrees with him, and the Drisha and the Bach attack him and say it's not true. This is just standard think, standard understanding of Rep. Papa, all three things are equal. Uh, 
in the Shulchan Aruch, the Sma, who is Rebbe Folk, then, just as we explain, says even in the Shulchan Aruch, the, the Mechaber, he left the tour. He went to pure Rambam. You notice in the Shulchan Aruch, when the, in the tour, when the Beis Yosef commented, he didn't say anything about the Rambam. He said it was the Shita of the Rush. But what the Rush said about uh, uh, Malva, that there's a preference the Malva can demand, uh, metalpolin over land, so that same preference exists in the Zikin. He didn't mention the Rambam, but when it came to writing the Halacha, the Beis Yosef wrote the Halacha like the Rambam. So Sma says, that's exactly how I explain the Rambam, which is standard, standard um, Rep Papa, and the only problem here is what happens if the Mazik's not around. That's why the Rambam said, when the Bastin collects, because the Bastin doesn't have the Mazik in front of him. Now the Shach doesn't like any of this. We're going to look at the Shach inside, of course, and refresh our memories, but the Shach now is going to attack all these people that are going to push uh, the Rush and the Tosfos and what we call standard think uh, into the Tour and Shulchan Aruch, and he's going to say both the Tour and the Shulchan Aruch are holding like the Rambam, and the Rambam has a shita which puts metal in front of Karka, and uh, he's going to eliminate all opposition. He's going to uh, fight the Bach, who consequently will also fight the uh, when he eliminates the Rush and the Bach, he'll eliminate the Shah the same time. All the proofs of the Bach he's going to destroy, including the fact that the Rambam is Rabbeinu, uh, Tam, the Tos, uh, that sheet in Reb Papa. He's going to knock them all out. And he's going to make a tremendous, tremendous uh, awareness of the Peshat and the Rambam that's based on Rev Huna. And again, he's going to describe all the people that are trying to put the Rabbeinu Tam and Tosfos and Rush and all those people into the tour and the Shulchan Aruch are just people who missed the boat. They just the old thing people trying to push old ideas into a different way of perception. That's why all this is gray. That's why they made their mistake. Really, the Rambam has a different way of Rifuna. So, this is what we're discussing. The O statement. When Rav Funa said, O Kesev O Meita, so all the people from Rashi, Riff, and all those people learned the O is an equal, an equal alternative. Okay? O Kesev, you have an alternative. The Maza can give either Kesev or Meita, an equal alternative. Comes along the Shach and he says, but that's not how the Rambam learned Peshat in Rav Huna. How did he learn him? He learned him with a hierarchical uh, o. Okay. Uh, I was thinking of an example, uh, trying to think of examples of this hierarchical or it's not so simple to find, but like in a recipe, right? You can, you can, they say, well, you can use this, and if you don't have this uh, uh, aubergine or whatever fancy eggplant, then you can use this as a substitute. But really, you're supposed to use the first thing first. If you don't have it, so this is a substitute. So I, I call it a, a substitute or. But in halacha, I came to another chiddush of calling it. I mean, we discussed it. Uh, called, we have an halacha called lechat chila and bidiyavit. That's what we just call the substitute of or. Which means what you're supposed to do lechat chila, you're supposed to give kesev. And if not, then bidiyavit, you can give meitav. O kesev, which is lechat chila. O Meitav, if you don't have Kesev, Bidi Evid. So that was a very, very big, big Kiddush of the Shach. Uh, that's very nice. That shows that there's a hierarchy between Kesev and Meitav. But how do you get to a hierarchy of Metalplin over Meitav? Where do you see that? So he says, well, just look at what Rav, 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 Rav Nachman did. Rav Nachman asked a question. When Rav Huna made his hierarchy, first Kesev and then Metatlin, Rav Nachman said, but wait a minute, what do you do with Shavu Kesev? So he said, Rav Huna said, Bidalesle. Now, if I had to give a name to our learning of this piece, I would call it the indefinite pronoun. The, 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 the dilemma of the indefinite pronoun. 
Okay, we started out with Sodehu. Remember Sodehu? Mate of Sodehu, the best of his land. So we didn't know if the Sodehu was the Nizak or the Mazak. Remember between Rabbi Yishmael and Rabbi Akiva? Right. Now we have another indefinite pronoun called Lay. Lay Slay. That's what Rav Huna answers Rav Nachman. Rav, Rav Huna said, O Kesev Ometav. Rav Nachman said to him, wait a minute. It says, Yoshi will rabbi shove a Kesev. He only gave two alternatives. So Rav Huna says, Bid the lay slay when you don't have it. So I don't know if it is also called a pronoun, but it's it's definitely one of these. Yeah? Okay. So it's good. So it's an indefinite it pronoun. But it's actually, in, in this, I, I think grammatically it's implied, because lay is him, right, not it. Oh, yes. Uh, what's it? In but the lay is like when he, when him, when him. Yeah, you're right. When he yeah. does not have. I'm sorry. Ain low. Well, ain low. You're right. Ain low. When he does not have. No, but the problem is, what doesn't he have? So Rashi learned, Rashi learned that he, the mazik, doesn't have kesiv or meta, right? And that's when you can give metaltalin. So that's the bottom of the triangle, right? Kesev metal are equal alternatives. That's the standard O. When you don't have the standard O of Kesev metaltalin, but the lay slay Kesev metaltalin, then you give subin or anything. Okay. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Let's do it again. I'm saying it too fast. When you don't have Kesev or Karka, that's the O, right? O Kesev O Karka. O Kesev O metal, right? If you don't have both of them, then and only then can you give metaltalin. Okay? So the lay, but the lay slay means when the mazik doesn't have the kesev or the meta that I was talking about because I made it an equal or, right? You can pay with kesev or meta, or metav, I'm sorry. You can pay with kesev or meta, right? So when you don't have both, which is the opposite of the statement, uh, then, then and only then can you use metathlon. So metathlon comes on the bottom of the triangle, right? Kesev metav top. When you don't have both, that's the metathlon comes in bidyevit. And that's how we learned Rashi, Rif, Rush, Tosfos, Rebena, you name it. All those nice, you know, Ashkenazim were just learning the Gemara simply. Nice way to learn, nothing wrong with it. It's, it, it's, it's very Meruvach and Peshat. It leaves the O in a simple sense comes along right with the shach and says, but the Rambam learned this O as a hierarchical O. L'chathchila, you have to give kesev. And if you don't have kesev, then you give metaf. Now, Rev Nachman said, what do you do with the Pasuk that says you can also give metatalin? Rev Huna said to him, b'delay slay. Well, b'delay slay what? B'delay slay kesev. But the lace like kesev, you can give metaltalin. But ain't no chanami, kesev is first. When you don't have kesev, you give And the worst thing is metav. So, oh, or kesev l'chatechila, or metav b'diyevit. And kesev is uh, one step above metaltalin. Now, remember with Abaya, we never wanted, we, 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 we never wanted really uh, 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 subin and metav to be together. They, 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 that was a bias kasha because because metav is a is a miut of subin. You have, I have to give the best, then how can I give the worst? So in this reading, everything works out nice. In, in again, in in let's say uh, this the old world think before Reb Papa uh, really is the best, and metav is the worst, and metalblin is when you don't have kesev. It's one step under kesev. Okay, so um, just want to think one second. No, I just take back what I said. Really, actually, this can work with Reb Papa. The way the way the 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 the, um, the way the um, I'm sorry. Let's do that again. Okay, according to the standard way of of learning Reb Huna which is an equal or, so you have kesev or metav, and if you don't have both, then you give subin, okay? So there, subin comes out to be less than kesev and metav, correct? Right. So if you're learning in a repapa's world, though, 
Sugun is better than Meitav, right? Meitav is, is Meitav is, is the worst, but it may come up to the level, but it definitely isn't as good as Metatlan, because Metatlan, you can easily get your money back. So the way that the Rashi says, the Rashi says Rav Hun is arguing with Rav Papa, remember? They're arguing. Again, they have some world views. According to Rav Huna, the best thing you can give is Metav and Kesev, probably because that's the most desirable type of things to the Nizak. And the worst thing you can give is Subin, because who, who wants Subin? No one wants Subin. Uh, that's how Rashi and all those people would learn Rav Huna. Now, Rav Papa made a revolution to say that really, if you look at terms of, Bech, of the Bechina of Kesev, Kesev is the best, and then you have Metatlan, which is close to Kesev, or equal to Kesev, and the worst thing you have is Karka. So that, that's a machlokis, uh, let's call it a philosophical machlokis between Rav Papa and Rav Huna, according to Rashi, okay, and all those people. But, however, the way that the Shach is presenting Rav Huna now, there's actually a very small difference between Rav Huna and Rav Papa. Why? Because even Rav Huna holds that the most important thing is Kesev. That's why he said, or Kesev, L'Chatchil, and if you don't have Kesev, you give that poor Meitav Karka. So he's also holding that Kesev is the best, just like Rav Papa. What's his Chiddush, says the Shach? That Metaltalin is one step under Kesev. Okay? It's Shavik Kesev, it's one step, Metaltalin of course is better than Meta, but it's one step under Kesev. Whereas Rav Papa would say that Metaltalin is equal to Kesev. Okay? And he says the Rambam Spesach Rav Papa. Again, they're only arguing about one point, and that's whether Metalton is equal to Kesev or not. Rav Huna says Metalton is less than Kesev, and Rav Papa says it's equal to Kesev. And the Ramam Pesach's like Rav Papa, because he's the Basroi, as the Rif said. And uh, so he holds that Kesev and uh, Metalton are equal alternatives, like Rav Papa. And when you don't have it, then you could collect from the Karka, which is the which is what he says. First you collect from the metatlin, and Kesev is equal to it, of course, and if you don't have them, then you can go to the Karka. So that was the Kiddush of the Shach. Okay? Now, the, the, the hierarchical or works, um, let's say works technically, but to push the or from a classic um, um, equal or, to a hierarchical or needs proof. And that's what the shach is going to provide. The shach is going to provide, first of all, he provides tr proof through what we call proof through uh, Masara. The, the, the Rivan, who's a very early Rishon, uh, says it. And uh, Sefer Chuma brings a Rebbein Hananel, who's a very, very early Spartak uh, Rishon, uh, coming is the source of, of, of the Rif and the Rambam and everything else, uh, they both say that there's a priority. So he says he has um, precedent to say it, but his big Hiddish is going to come from uh, a Gemara in Daf Dalet, which he's going to say is uses the word Neskachon, what the Rambam uses, and it's going to be um, uh, is going to be his proof, really, that the force to say that uh, that um, Kesev is um, Kesev is equal to Metalton and they're both greater than Karka. He's going to use that as a force. Okay, so we, our work is cut out for us, but what we saw here was a brilliant, I mean, the Shach is English Shire, the, 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 the depth of his understanding here and the way that he uh, made sense out of the Rambam by keeping him in his classic sense, bringing precedent from great Roshonim before him, and then showing that that's uh, what the halacha is, okay, uh, through, we'll see in a second, through this Kambar and Dalit, okay, so that's the work of the Shach. Now, as I said, we have, that's around 1600, so we have another 400 years of Torah, and basically we said there's going to be the either the, 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 the people who um, knock the shach out or modify him. That's what they'll be doing. They'll either be, and all the, all the texts the shach brings and removing them and bringing back 
the Sman, bringing back the Bach, or bringing back, okay? Or they'll be modifying him and they'll say, wait a minute, he only said this. I would say it only exists in the tour, not in the shul. In, excuse me, the shulchan aruch, not in the tour. So they're either going to attack him completely or partially, but that'll be the next action that we'll have with the Vilna Goin and and his student, uh, the Nachlas Dabit, and then our uh, almost contemporary, the Rebbe uh, Ismail. So that's what we have to do. Okay, so now let's get from the broad. Uh, understanding to the specific understanding, okay? More or less, that's all we did up to this point. Yeah. Okay, so it's... takes a lot of talking to realize what's at stake. Basically, if you boil everything down, it comes down to one little principle, that the Lushan of the Tur and the Shulchan Aruch gives a precedent of Metaltal and Ovakarka. And since we didn't see that in any interpretation of Rev Papa or Rev Huna, we have to explain the Rambam. So what the Shach is doing is explain it how the Rambam read Rev Huna. And as I said, he's not the only one he tells you. And he's going to show that that's Peshat in the Rambam. And anyone who tries to cripple the Rambam or hijack him and put him into old think of, of Rebbeinu Tam is doing injustice to the Rambam. So that's basically what it is. So uh, here it's very important to see the layout because he's he's a classical. Um, this is classic Torah in the sense that it's based on proof. It's based on disproof, as the Ramchal says in the beginning of Derek Tefunos. What the the method of Gemara learning is is to demonstrate all the pluses and minuses in an argument. And then when all the pluses and minuses are on the floor, at that point you can make a value judgment. Okay. Um, so that's what happens. The 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 Shach now is the proponent of the Sma and he brings proof against the Sma and then after he disproves the Sma he replaces it with uh, his interpretation of Rev Huna, which also has precedent, which is classic, and uh, and then uh, he goes on to f explain that this, which seems very dochek in Rev Huna, is actually you're forced to say it if you understand the Gemara Daf Yadalit. So that's where we're holding. Classic again. Here's the setup in my visual, what I call visual logic. You have the Sma that says, well, you know. The um, the Shulchan is talking about when the Mazik is not in front of us. Okay, which is very dochek, but he said, but that keeps the world with sun uh, going around the universe and everybody is happy because it's all the rush and the riff and what we have ever thought. It doesn't shake anything else. But of course, he says this is not the Chidi for Beis Yosef. The Beis Yosef says it's not true. I, excuse me, that was in the tour. And the Beis Yosef said that's not true. The tour has a new Shita which added what we know from Balchov into Nizikin. And just in Balchov, the, the, um, the person who's collecting has a right to everything that's closer to Kesev. So, too, that's the same thing that's going on in Nizikin. Okay, that's what the Beis Yosef said, and the Sma said, yes, no force for that, because the Rush himself said there's no comparison between the Zikin and, uh, and uh, Balchov. So, just as a side comment, we're going to see the, the Sma is going to show that there are people that hold, yes, indeed, there is a, a very, very intimate relationship between the Zikin and Balchov, which he's going to show us in, in a second. But again, classic Classic, the classic um, uh, understanding is that the rush clearly said that the din of having any priority of ke of kesev or metaplan over over land only exists in in Balchov and not in the Zikin. and um, that move of the uh, of the tour is unprecedented. It goes against flies in the face of his father, and uh, there's no source for that. So. Shach is going to show us what is the source. So he says, anyway, what the Sma did when he brutally attacked the Beis Yosef was totally incorrect. 
The truth is that the Rambam and the Mechaber is like the Yeshushan and uh, also the Tur and everybody and uh, and he even shows it to us in the Muk Yosef in the simple language of the Rambam. I'm going very quickly. It all comes down to the one thing that we don't care about what the Mazik wants, what the Nizik wants. The din is in the Rambam very simple. You ask the Mazik if he has Kesev, Metaltalin, and Karka, and if he has all three, you tell him you can't give your land. That's the din. There's a precedent of Metaltalin over land, and also Kesev. That's it. And that's the simple words he says of the Rambam, and then he brings another proof from this case of Yusamim, uh, just to get rid of this concept of Sma, that when the Mazik's not around, the based in says, well, what would the Mazik do? Well, he'd give his metaltal. And well, he says, that's ridiculous, because the Rambam in the next halacha, and also the tour says when the the father of the poor Yusamim, who's the Mazik, dies, he's definitely not around, According to you, we should give uh, metaltalin to the Nizak because that's what the father, if he was here, he would claim, and we should claim for the orphans what what the father would claim. Yet we see it's not true. We give them land. So this concept of the Sma, of the basin not being, uh, uh, trying to figure out what the Mazik wants is not what's happening. Okay, that's not the halacha. Now, here in this piece, Gimel, he explains why everybody is making their fatal error. They're using old think to push the Rambam around so it fits into their old concept packages. And that's what he explains here. He says, if you look at the the Rebendu Tam, and you'll see that they all definitely hold an equality that the Maza can choose. But, uh, but that's not the Rambam. Okay, and here's the Rambam. The Rambam is new think. He has a, a, a new way of learning the Gemara. It's not so new because he'll show you that, in a second, he'll show you that other people like the Rabbeinu Hananel thought about it that way, and he's just following that tradition. Uh, so you just made a fatal error. But where does it, where does the Rambam find his the source for his halacha? Say the Metalton is better than Metal? It's Rev Huna. But you have to read Rev Huna a different way. You read a hierarchical Rev Huna. And that's what he says over here. O Kesev, the Chathila, O Metav. Came around Merak Nachman said, What do you do with Metatl? And that's if you don't have Kesev. So according to Rev Huna, it's Kesev. If you don't have Kesev, it's Metatl. And that's with the lace like Kesev, you give Metatl. And if you don't have both of those, of course, you fall back to Metav. So there, the Ramam is telling you that. The, excuse me. So there's that's Rav Huna who has a triple hierarchy. But what does the Shach conclude? But Rambam is pesak like Rev Papa. Ubahor the Kesiv lo kaimelam Rav Huna. The fact that Kesiv has a priority over Metaltalin that the Rambam doesn't hold it. That that the halacha like Rav Huna. Ella he holds like Rev Papa that a filu subin is made tough. Okay, that really was the beauty of what we did last week, that the machlok is here between, as the Rambam is learning, is only about whether metaplon is equal to um, kesef or not. They both, they both agree that metav is the worst, and they're really only arguing whether there's any preference of kesef over metaplon. The Rav Huna will say there is. Uh, because for the late slay Kesev, then you give metaltalin, and Rav Papa will say there isn't. Again, we have a lot of uh, um, what we call inferences here that are made because of omission, right? Now, Rev Papa didn't speak about Kesev, did he? Okay. Uh, but we're presuming that since he's arguing with Rev Huna, they have to be arguing about something. Uh, they're arguing about the position of Kesev. And we have the Ramam that says that Again, through admission, um, omission, Rambam does not talk about Kesev, right? He just says that there's a priority of Metaltalin over. But, but the, the Shach is going to maintain and bring a proof that really the Rambam holds Kesev and Metaltalin are equal, and that will be Rav Papa. He'll bring a proof from another Gemara to press that point, and that will be the Machlokas, Rav Hun and Rav Papa. So that's how we left off in the, in the, in the Shach. Okay, now the Shach, 
is not content to say that in Svara, but he shows us that that indeed uh, was the Rebbeinu Hananel, who was the source of all the Svara Kalacha. Uh, that's exactly how he learned the Rev Huna. So he brings the Sefer Hatrumas, and in the Sefer Hatrumas, the Sefer Hatrumas requotes Rabbeinu Hananel. What did Rabbeinu Hananel say? And we can actually see what he says. But let's see what first he quotes. He says that Muvor lehed jagam ken lehed chananel shehevi sham hach the Rev Huna. Rev Chananel brings Rev Huna. Umay de shakol v'tari hasam b'shasalav, and the give and take between Rev Huna and Rev Menachman, right? And the Rev Rev Chananel concludes the following. He says, "Because of all that, may hacha from this Gemara of Rev Huna." Shaminan de lo mis salkin alcho ba'ara. Ella heche de kamlan de leis leizuze le miframine. So the Rabbeinu Hanana says, from this Rev Huna that you're looking at, we can understand the case of Balchov. What case of Balchov? That if the Balchov has uh, metaltalin, uh, Let's say let's use exact words. If he has kesev and he has land, he must give the kesev. So Rabbeinu Hananel is deriving the din of Balchov from our case of Rav Huna in Ezekin, right? Again, this is new think, because according to the Rush, there's no comparison between Ezekin and Balchov, correct? In, in Balchov, the, 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 the Malva gave money, has a right to give money back, as I'm doing this weekend. But that's Rush think, okay? But it's not Rabbeinu Hananel think, because Rabbeinu Hananel says, from this Rev Huna, we're going to do, which is talking about Nazikin, we're going to learn the din of Malva. What din of Malva? That there's a precedent of Kesiv over Metav. There's two great Hidushim here. One, unlike the old think people, like the Rush and all the other Ashkenazim, uh, we see that uh, there is a connection uh, between Balchov and Ezekin. Unlike the Rush, let's say, who says it clearly, there isn't. And number two, from this Rev Nachman, we see there's a precedent of Kesev over, over land. So the Shach says to us, can I ask you a question? How did Rabbeinu Hananel learn Rev Huna that there's a precedent of Kesev over the land? Could you explain that to me? What are you forced to say? You're forced to say that this O is a hierarchical O. No other way you can explain it. Right. QED, that's exactly what I'm telling you. There's there's new think. There's Rabbeinu Hanel think. Okay? Now, he points out that the Gedule Truma, who reads the Rabbeinu Hanel, of course, is totally amazed at what Rabbeinu Hanel said, because there's no connection. It's apples and pears. Why? Because he's in rush think. He's in old think, where there's no connection between Metatlin, number one, and, and, and Balchov. And number two, there's, there's only an equal and, an equal or, I'm sorry. So Dule Truma attacks this Rebbeinu Hananel, and he says, look, I don't know what he's talking about. This makes absolutely no sense. Comes along the Shach and says, well, if you were to think differently, it would make quite a lot of sense. Just change the O from an, a, an alternative O to a hierarchical O, and everything fits into place. Nice? That's what he says. So that's one point for the Shach. He has Rabbeinu Hananel, and he can explain Rabbeinu Hananel through a hierarchical move. Now he brings point number two, the Rivan. The Rivan is a very early Rishon. 
very early Rishon, Ashkenazic Rishon, and he says, well, let's see what the Rivan says. So the Rivan, let's read the Rivan a little here. Maybe you read a little, okay? I don't think we did a Rivan together, did we? I don't know if we got to the Rivan. No, we did, this is exactly where we... Uh, this is where we let off. So let's read, yeah, because I tried to read it quickly. Yeah. I said, come on, it's not, you have to... That's right. Yeah, you have to give, you have, you have to think. We must think. And you have to give the Rishonim the proper kavod that they're speaking deeply and briefly. So if you just try to swiftly go through it, you'll get a, a it's like a, you know, supersonic jet flying over the, over, you know, Paris. You can say that you went over Paris, but you can't really say you saw too much of it. Okay, so let's go slowly. Let's read the Rivan here, okay? What does he say? Go ahead. Um, so I mean, who? The person. Ah, the, the one who was obligated by Bestin to pay his friend back, uh, whether he, oh, I see my little, little here. Let's hope you can't sleep. Sorry, I'm just going to, if you can't sleep, are we too noisy? What's wrong? Is it too noisy? Oh, okay. Mommy, can you can you do talk to Sophie? Okay. Sorry, my, just, my little girl got, was awake. Okay. Okay. So uh, when Bez, when Bezdin obligates a person to pay back, um, and I guess and he's saying malve uh, on so it's very important case. Now, isn't that important? And, and can I make a few points here? Remember the Lushan of Rambam, Kesha, based in Niskakin. Right? And here too, Umisha Chayvuhu based in Lashalam Chavaro. Right? That's number one. We're talking about the based in says, you now, Mazak, have to pay. And number two, the Rivan is putting together in one breath the din of Malva and Nizikin. Okay? Something that the rush wanted to separate. These are to him it's two different worlds. The Malva gave money as a right to get money back. But the Nizak didn't give any money, so why does he have any precedent? Therefore money and Shavikes of land, they're all equal. There's no such thing as priority. But the Rivan, who's a very early Tosfos, like we'll look up later his his dates very, very early, like one thousand, you know, um an Ashkenaz says clearly that there's a relationship between Malva and Nizak. Okay, what is the relationship? Continue. Enu yachol l'chofo litin lo kesef. Enu, they can't, uh, they can't force him to pay with money. Enu shava kesef v'afilu subin. Stop. So up to this, yes, please, I'm sorry. I don't quite understand the grammar of this. It's, it's, it's saying they can't force him to pay with money, but they can force him. But he may give shava kesef even subin. In other words, here we have the yeah. Here we have the the relationship between kesef and subin, right? You might think that the basin can force kesef over subin, and the answer is no. Why would you think that? Just as we explained, that could be Rev Huna, right? But we're not going to hold like Rev Huna, we're going to hold like Rev Papa, okay? Which says there isn't. But what he's saying here in the simple words is that if the Mazik has Kesev or Subin, you, the Basin cannot force him to give Kesev. Subin is equal to Kesev. And a Yocha Lekofo Liten Lo Kesev, Ela Shavik Kesev Afil Subin. He can give Shavik Kesev even Subin. Clear? So in both cases, when you're talking about the relationship of Kesev and Shavik Kesev, even Subin, there is no difference. He can, the, the, the Mazik or the Lova can give back Kesev or Shavik Kesev equally. Unlike what the Rush said, remember? Right. The Rush said in Malva, you can force him to give Kesev because he has a Svara since you gave Kesev yeah, right back. This is not the Shita of the Ravan. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, how does he know that? 
How does he know that Kesef is equal to Shavit Kesef? Let's see. Kida Amar. Oh, this is this is a very yeah. This is that Rumia, yeah. So when it says the Meit of Sadehu, it means specifically Sade, uh, means a field, and not another means of payment. The Hatanya Yashiv Rav Shava Kesef, Afidu Suvin, and the Baraisa uh, explain that the word Yashiv includes Kesef and even Suvin. Who's my name, Suvin? Right. Wait, so how is he getting from this that... We're not finished. Ah, if you, oh, okay. We're not finished. That's only the setup, right? At the beginning, he's just mm-hmm. quoting the Gemara. Abaya had a contradiction between Mesa of Sadeu and, and, and it seemed that uh, Mesa of Sadeu in nothing else, right? Definitely not sin. Mm-hmm. But yet, you see, his suban means everything else. That was our original Rumi of Abaya. Mm-hmm. Umaskana. Um, 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 what's the conclusion of the Gemara? Anything that uh, can be given, or that he gives that can be, it is a movable, even suvin, is considered metav. Right. So all movables, all movables, even suvin, is called metav. That's the maskana. Right? You thought you must give Metav Karka, and therefore Yuvare couldn't give Subin, because look, you have to give the best thing, you can't give the worst. Comes along the Copernican revolution of Repapa, and his conclusion is you got it wrong. All Metav is called good. Why? The next line. The E. The E lo mizdavan be'ahi pasa, mizdavan be'masa achrino. Because if we don't, can't sell it here, we'll sell it in another city. So all Mehara. So all Metav is good. It's great. And the only thing that's not good is land. Right? That's not good. So the Torah said the lace of lay mi metav ki hechide lichbot saleha zvine, right? Direct quote of the Gemara. So that's what he said in Nazikin. Now the Rivan is going to talk about Malva. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, what's the, what's the case in Malva? Read. This is, this is, he's lending Benonus of land? Is that what? No, oh, yeah, that, that, that's very good. No, no, he has to pay back in Benonus. Whereas the Nizak has to pay back in Idis, Metav. The only difference between the Nizak and the Malva is that the Malva only has to pay back with Maidenis. Where, where is he getting this? From the Gemara? Yeah, not our Gemara, Gemara, by the way. Not our Gemara, Gemara. From another Gemara. The Gemara says, the Gemara says uh, we, that the, the, the Nizak has to pay Metav and the, and the Balchov has to pay Maidenis. Okay, and really, he really should pay Zibris the Balchov. But if we tell him to pay Zibris, then no one will lend money. So that's why he pays Bainanis. Okay, because uh, if a guy's going to you know, get back Zibris, he'll never lend. Okay, but that's another Gemara. But it's very important that the. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, now. So when it comes to the Malva, the only difference between him and the Nizak is the quality of the land. The Nizak has to pay. It is, and the Malva can pay back with, I mean, the Lova actually can pay back the Malva with Bain in this land. It doesn't have to pay back with his land. Okay. So now he continues about the Malva, Bays. The Epar Metaltalin, the whole Shava Kesa. Just one, one. Just send him one second. Okay, yes, I'm sorry. The E paro. Okay. So what I forget what paro means. Oh uh, to pay. 
So he now we're talking here about a uh, about a lova, right? Remember Correct. The lova. So right. he so that means that he received metaldolin again, or so we do assume that he's always receiving kesef. Yes. And that he's really it's always a question of how he's paying back here. That's correct. Okay, so he he's paying back with metaltolin. Uh the whole uh, because it's equivalent to money. Metaltolin yes. is equivalent to, equivalent to money. And dichtiv ha'isha sheratan no sebo the the person who you loan money to should stand outside, and the balchov has to come and give him the kalim. That's how he wants to learn that the the loaner, because the book says, right, the, the man who uh, loaned the money has to stand outside, and the he can't go into the house and rip him, you know, grab his stuff. He has to wait outside, and the and the balabai should give him the, the kalim. Okay, the fact that he can give him kalim means that he can pay him back with kalim. So that's what they want to learn, that Shavik Kesev is here, he wants to learn it, that Shavik Kesev is equal to Kesev. Okay. V'yi uh, parametatlin, so he says, the call to the Shavik Kesev, because he, he can pay with Shavik Kesev, even though he borrowed money. It says, how do we know? Because the Pusik says he can bring, the, 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 the Malva should wait outside, and the Lobo should bring him his Kalim. So that's Shavik Kesev, right? And, Umar Darko shall Adam Lahotzi Pachus me Bekalim. Maybe it's only the expensive Kalim. Maybe it's only the Meitav Kalim. Right? But it's the way of a person when he has to pay back the debt, he'll, he'll bring back the, the, the most inexpensive Kalim. So the, so the, the Torah is Maramez that the Malva has to wait outside like a little booba. He shouldn't be aggressive and he should be kind and realize that he has a mitzvah to loan. And uh, he should accept even the simplest. Uh, Kalim from the uh, Lova. Okay? Now, Vahani Mile says the Marvan, these words that he has to accept the Kalim. Okay. The That's a big Kiddish. I see. So, right, so it's, this is only when. They is this they know the court or who who does he he doesn't have I believe that's a good question. I believe it means the court. The court knows that he doesn't have money. Yes. So the 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 um the Baal the Lova can pay back with Metaltalin only when he doesn't have Kesev. Okay? If the court knows that this poor man doesn't have Kesev and they allow him to pay the Malva with Metaltalin, the Metaltalin must accept and the and the and the and uh, the the um, and the uh, Malva must accept it. Continue aval. Aval yadinam the islay kesef. If we know the court, right? Yeah, if the court knows that in fact he does have money. Yes. Yahivle, he should give it to him. And how do we know um, that? Huna. Now listen to this. Let's now. Here's the here's the crescendo. Uh, how do we know? that the Baal Chov, if he has money, has to give money and he can't give metaltolin. Where do we learn it from? Right, from Rav Huna, O Kesef, O Meta. So he sees, he also reads it with the same hierarchical or. Exactly, and he spells it out. The Isevi of Rav Nachman, Yashiv L'Rav L'Shav HaKesef HaFilo Sivin, and uh, when Rav Nachman says to him, "Yes, the kasha," when when he asks him, uh, "What about the word yashiv, which uh, which which implies the equivalent of uh, kesef and even ram?" Shamile, and he answered him, "Achav b'mayas kinan, the lace like kesef." Haha, nice. Right, this is very this is very explicit. Exactly, he has an explicit yeah, yeah. source from the Rivan. Yeah. Right. Our indefinite pronoun. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. There it is. He spells it out. We, the 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 the, the Rach didn't spell it out. We had to just say, well, the Rach made a comparison, so you know it must be that he's thinking this way. But here, the Rivan spells it out. Right. He says clearly that in the Zikin and in Malchov, we learn from Rev Huna that if you have Kesef, you can't give Metaltolin. How do you know? Because when Nachman said, what do you do with 
Metatl and Yashiv, he said, but the less lay Kesev. Right? Oh, is he saying that that since Rav Nachman's objection implies that he should be, king, be paying because, uh, with Kesev Lechatchila, that therefore that's why this applies to Balchov? In other words, because Balchov is really the default position is that we're always dealing with Kesev. And so since Kesev is the the Lechatchila position here, therefore... I mean, my question is, how, how did he know that this applies, or the, in general, the question is, how does he know that our case really applies to Balchov? Very good question. So and the answer is, it's through a logical comparison. It's a premise. It's a premise. If you say, if you notice on the top, that the Malva and the Nizak are the same case, if you make no distinction, yeah. a Nizak is just paying back a debt, that's all. And the loaf is just paying back a debt. The people that owe someone money and don't make any distinctions between them. The only distinction is when it comes to land, one says meta, one says bainanis. But they're both essentially just people paying off a debt. That's it. And that's a svara, by the way. It was the rush that said there's a svara to break that comparison. He was the one that said the Svara. There's no Gemara. He was the one that said the Svara. Since the Malva gave money, has a right to give money back. That was the Svara. But the Rivan holds that there is absolutely no distinction. They're both paying back a debt. So whatever goes on to the Zikin will go on with Malva. And the only difference will be one little small detail, whether you give Meitav a in this land. But as far as paying off your debt... When you have money, you must do it. That's what Rebbe said in Nezikin. And since Nezikin is, in logic, comparable to Malva, there's no distinction between the two cases. So the same thing goes on in, in, in Malva. That you, if you have case, if you have to give it. Even though the Rivan is disagreeing with the Rosh, isn't he at least accepting the the premise of the, that the Rosh is also operating with, that, well, look, the, the Rosh says you have to pay back. You, you got Kesef from the guy who, the guy lent you Kesef. You pay him back in Kesef. Okay, that's a nice, clean point. And that only uh, exists just, where? Where does that by, exist? By, uh, by, by Balchov, only by Balchov. Exactly. Not by, uh, right, not by Nizikin. Right. Now, he, now, the, now the Rivan, he's, he's disagreeing with that conclusion. He's saying, no, 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 you can also pay back a Suman. But, but in order to disagree with it, he's actually, he seems to be at least acknowledging the default position that you should be paying, yes, of course you should be paying with Kesef, but delay slay Kesef, that's why I'm thinking that, you know, the, the fact that he emphasizes delay slay Kesef, okay, it's fine, so pay with the student. But he also accepts, why, why am I asking this? Because this seems to be the, the it, it, it seems to be essential to, to, to acknowledge that Kesef is the default position in order to make the comparison between Nezikin and uh, Love. Because otherwise, how do you make the comparison? Unless you accept that, that in both cases, Kesef is the preferable form of payment. You say, oh, okay, that's why. But we have the, basically the same situation. Kesef is the, and they all, now the question is, well, you know, what are the details? But generally speaking, they're both, Kesef is the way to pay back. In other words, he's he's learning because the question, my question, my first question was, how is he learning from Nizikin how to deal with Love, with uh, Love and Malve? The answer is, it's, it's a dimion. It's a dimion. The but two the cases, mean, the two cases in Sfer are exactly the same. There is no difference between the two. So right. So the dimion is that that the default position is Kesef. No, no. The dimion is in the not in not not the default position is Kesef. That's not the dimion. The demon is in the quality of the debt. In other words, is is there any is there any difference between a nizak and a simple balchov? That's the question. Is a nizak only a person that's indebted to someone? What's the difference if I gave him the money as a loan, or or I owe him the money because it, because of some damage that happened? Again, not clear. What's the difference between a person who accepted a loan and has to pay it back and a person who 
was mopsied someone's money through Nasdaq and has to pay it back. In both cases, it's just called paying back money. In other words, the nature of both cases are, are the same. A Nizak is only a, a Nizak is only a lova. A Nizak is only someone who's paying back money. We have to talk about now. In other words, to get this crystal clear, to spell it out very clearly, we have to talk about what is the relationship between the Nizak and the Mazik when it comes to paying this money back. Is he like, is it just called, uh, is it like borrowing money or not? So you have to explain to me why should it be like borrowing money and why shouldn't it be like borrowing money? Uh, you could make a case that these two cases are radically different. One, I, one, I willfully gave my money, that's the Malva gave his money to the Lova, and the Lova has to now pay it back. And in the Nizak, I didn't give my, any money, my money willfully to the, uh, to the Masik. He took it without my consent. So you can make a case that these two cases are not comparable logically. They are not similar. Or you could say, no, we're just talking about a case where you owe someone money. I don't care about the method that the, that the debt uh, became a debt. I just care about how do you pay back your debts. In that case, we equal the grounds between Mazik and Lova. We say that the differences are not important. It's just simply, how do you pay back a debt? You hear what I'm saying? It has nothing to do with Kessa being first. It has to do with the, with, the, with the quality of the two cases. Are the two cases identical or not? In nature, is there, is, is there any significant difference between the, 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 the debt of the Nizak and the debt of the Lova. So you can make a case, yes, like the Rush does. It says the Lova got money uh, from the Malva. The Malva has a right to demand money back. Well, you could say, no, it's just the Lova's just paying back a debt, that's all. How did he get the debt? What's the difference if he got the debt because he owes the Malva or he, or, or he owes the, uh, or he owes the, the, the Nizak? It's just the debt, you owe someone money. So this is where the, and if you remember, this is what really the Beis Yosef did at the higher level. If you remember, the Beis Yosef said that the tour held that what went on in, in, in Malva and Nazikin are identical. Even though his father said there was a significant difference, his father came up with a difference. But the tour leveled the ground and said the two cases are equal. You see, the tour could have read the Rivan, and the, that's what the Rivan does. He levels the ground between the two, and he says there are, there's, no, there's no significant difference between the two. You just owe money. What's the difference if you owe money because someone loaned you the money or, someone, uh, uh, or, or you damage someone's property and you owe the money? It's just a question of paying back a debt. He doesn't, are you saying that he doesn't really... See, the, the way you're explaining it is, it, is that it, it sounds like... The Rosh is coming in, is coming up with a Chiddush. He's coming up with a Nafkamina. He's saying, look, a, I can explain to you why, why loans are different from damages. It has to do with the fact that you got money to begin with, so you have an obligation to pay back in like currency. And don't start you know, messing around with forms of currency. You give back money. Now, you're, it seems you're, like the way I'm hearing you, you're saying that that's, that's a Chiddush. And if it weren't for that Chiddush, so we wouldn't even think of making a difference between the two. There would be no nafkamina. That's correct. So in a sense, so the Rivana doesn't really, but what am I saying? I'm saying that he doesn't really have to ha have a proof. Exactly. The, the, he, the, exactly. The, onus, the onus of the argument, the onus of the proof, yes. the burden of the proof, is strictly on the, on the Rosh, if he yes. wants to take that position. Yes, and the Rosh has no Gemari as a Svara. It's not like a Gemara said that. There's no Gemara that says that. Ah, so it's his personal svar. Okay. It's his svar. He says, look, I in logic make a distinction between the Malva and the, and the Nizak. Okay. I mean, between the Lova and the Nizak, let's say, to keep them, you know, or, or no better, the, because the Malva is paying back and the Nizak, between the Malva and the Nizak is correct. Both the Malva and the Nizak, uh, I, I make a distinction. I think that the Malva gave money, has a right to demand money. Now, where's your Gemara?
Where is his <laughs> Where is it? Okay, you have to have a Gemara. <laughs> you have a nice Svara, but it's only a Svara. And the Rivan says, Posh, there is no difference. So I don't see, I'm not forced to make a difference. You're just paying back the debt, that's all. What's the difference if the debt came because of a, of a Hezek or the debt became because the mom gave you money? What's the difference? I don't see any difference. Okay. I don't see a significant difference. So as you said, the burden of proof is on the rush to make that distinction. So the tour now says, well, my father had a wonderful Kiddush, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not forced to accept that. I, I hold it, Malva and, and, and Hezekiah, and therefore, uh, and therefore you have to, if you have a precedent uh, to pay in Ezekiel, you have a precedent to pay in Malva. Well, he says, actually, yeah. yeah. Now, how does he know there's a precedent to pay in Ezekiel? How does the Beis Yosef know there's a precedent to pay in Ezekiel? So here comes the Shach, and he explains to you, well, the Beis Yosef knows the Rivan. The Rivan says it. And the Rebbeinu Hananel, all through his comparison between Nazikin and Malva, makes an equation. He also says it. So don't think that that uh, that 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 uh, the tour is 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 you know out to lunch by by saying that there's a comparison between the two cases. Both the Rebbeinu Hananel and the Rivan say it. Ah, the Rush has a chiddush. Fine, it's, he's allowed to have a chiddush, but it's but as you said, the, the burden of proof is on him. Now, what did Rabbeinu Tam say? What did Rabbeinu Tam say? Rabbeinu Tam. I have him over here. Remember him, Rabbeinu Tam? Here he is, Balchov. He was with Rav Huna, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah. He falls in line with Rav Huna. So he says, "E Balchov and the Balchov." What does he say? It's right here. If he has money, he must pay him with money. Oh, as it's proven, and he brings a Gemara from Kesuvis. We didn't get into it. We have to read that Gemara now. But he says he has a proof that when it comes to the Malva, if he has money, he has to pay it first. Unlike the Rivan. Oh, so is this going to be the source text also for the Rosh? Yes, because the Rosh is following in part, you see. The Rosh is picking and choosing over here. You have to be very careful what the Rosh is doing. <laughs> Not so simple. Because he disagrees with the uh, Rabbeinu Tam as far as the halacha is concerned than Ezekiel, right? He says it's like the Rif, because that's where Pop everything is equal. But in Balchov, in Balchov, he could agree with Rabbeinu Tam. That's a different case altogether. There's no comparison. That's what Rabbeinu Tam says. Nazikin is one case. We have to discuss the law in Nazikin. And Balchov is a different case. In Nazikin, you can give Kesev or Meitav equally. If you're Rev Huni, you can even you can't give metalton equal. If you're Rev Papa, you can give metalton equal, right? Mm -hmm. But in Balchov, if you have Kesev, you can't give land, you can't give metalton. Forget about it, says says Rabbein Otan. Okay, so he holds that there's a world of difference between the two cases, but he also supplies us with a proof. Okay. So we have to now investigate that proof here. You see that the, 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 this is called following the paper trail, right? <laughs> okay. Because they're all involved in a deeper analysis of the, of the Shas than we are. We're just, you know, hanging on their coattails. And whatever they say in one place, we're happy to understand it. But they're looking at the Shas in its entirety. And they're looking at the dynamics between all the cases and how they work together. So when they write their equals MC squared, it looks rather simple to us. But once you start entering into the forces of the different Gemaras and cases, then you start entering into their world, which was a, a very careful analysis. And each one, again, is going to analyze differently. Now you have to say, how did the Rivan not hold this, this Gemara and Kesuvis? He must have read it a different way, right? Because he says that the two cases are comparable, and and uh, 
Oh, no, because he says this Gemara is correct. Balchov, you definitely have to give Kesev over, um, over everything else. That's in Balchov. But whereas Rabbeinu Tam is learning from, the way he's learning Rav Huna is that Rav Huna is saying Kesev and Metav are equal partners, right? The Ravan will say, no, this is a hierarchical or, and you must give Kesev first, and, and if you don't have Kesev, you give Metav. So they're arguing again in Peshat and Rav Huna. They'll agree with Balchov that Zuze, if you have money, you have to give it before. No Svara uh, here in, in Rabbein Tam. The Svara is added by the brush. But they'll, so they'll both agree, fine, you have a Gemara that when it comes to Balchov, you have to give Kesev over everything. Fine, wonderful. What does it have to do with Ravuna? What does that have to do with Ravuna? So they're arguing. Rabbein Tam says, Ravuna says, Kesev or Metav is the two equal alternatives, and the Rivan and the Rambam and the Rach will say this is a hierarchical or. So even in the Zikin, Kesev will be greater than Metav and also Metavla. So it boils down to how they're going to learn this Rav Hun is very critical. So I said to you first, it looks like the Rivan is making a simple logical comparison between the case of Nazikan and Balchov, right? And that didn't fit well with you. Okay, so uh, here we see that they're arguing in Peshat in Ravuna. Yeah. Right? If it's, if, they both agree in Balchov that there's a hierarchy. But when it comes to Ravuna, the Rivan and, and, and the Rach and, and, and the Rambam and the Shach will all explain it's a hierarchy of or and Rabbeinu Tam says, come on, this is a standard or, an equivalent or. So he'll hold, you could give the Kesev or Metav, and if you don't have it, it's Metavlin. They'll hold, no, Kesev, Rishon, Metav second, and in between the Kesev and Metav, you have your Metavlin. If you don't have Kesev, you give Metavlin. Can we, can we assume, I mean, we have the right to assume that the position of the Rambam and so on, when, they, when they're reading Rav Huna, that they're thinking that Rav Huna's position is, is informed by Ksuvos. So in other words, that when Rav, Rav Huna, when he's making that statement, he's not making it in, in, in isolation from Ksuvos. But he's actually taken that into account. In other, and that they're no, reading. Very good. They're very, no, it, it very, that's a very good possibility. That they held really in Svar, the two cases were equal. And therefore, what happened in Kinsuvis must happen in the Zikin. And therefore, we have to make this O oh, a, a, a hierarchical O. Oh, it could be very well. That could be the, right. the, the push. Very well. Very well. That very well could be the push. Yeah. And the right, matter because otherwise yeah. it's just logical. It's yeah, just a, exactly. You know, it's a logical possibility, but where's it coming from? Right, excellent. So, a matter of fact, the the, the Nachas David is going to say that this is going to be the push, really. Uh, later on, we're going to see this is that's exactly his point here. It's a question how you interface the Balchov with the Nazikin. Right. If you say that they're equal, then what happens in the Balchov? You'll push into Rav Huna and come up with this hierarchical or, or, and if you say not so that they're not equal, so you'll say it's a normal or in the Zikin, and, uh, and uh, in Balcho, there's a hierarchical or when it comes to Kesev. And then if you're the rush, you'll add a Svar even into, into Balcho if you want, you know. You know, the, that since he gave money, not, which the Gemara doesn't say, but that's, the, that's, that's a, a, a reasonable understanding of why Balcho is different. Right, right. That's Gavaldic. Well, is that necessarily going to imply that that Balchov is somehow a more comprehensive category than Ezekiel? I don't know if it's more confirm uh, it, it, I don't know if it's similar or a, a greater um as you say more comprehensive it, you know I don't know that relationship it could be just that it's similar in other words as we said that the Balchov is uh 
is uh, is is in Svara equal to the Nizak. They're just people that owe money. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be a large. It, it it's in Svara an equivalent. It could be larger, or I don't know exactly what would be the difference if you say it's larger in the Zik and the Zaprat, or that there's an equality. I don't know if there'll be any difference. Uh, you know, that will come out, but but in Svara we don't see entrance. That will be the, that, that's what they're arguing with. I'm just, the reason I say it's more comprehensive is that if, you know, the one that you could, they, there are those who stress the difference between the two cases and they, you know, they say don't import reasoning from one into the other. Mm -hmm. But it, but the Rambam who is doing this import, so it sounds like, but I'm not, I'm not quite getting it, it sounds like he's saying that it's almost the genus and the species, that the more generic consideration here is paying back. When we're talking about paying back, our, our, our most generic way of looking at it is, is paying back a loan. And damages is a almost, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a species of that because it has its own situation, but... Yeah, but it is a species, and the only thing that distinguishes it is a special name in land. But not right, so any... It's a qualification. It's a qualification, but it, it but it has nothing to do with the fact that it's a, a species of the genus called Balkhov. Right. That's just a special. That's a special. He'll tell you it's a special uh, um, um, consideration given to the Nizak. In other words, we want the Nizak to get his money back a little quicker than the than the Malva. The Malva really is supposed to get Zibris even, but we we don't want to you know knock out all Malvas. So in that balance, we just we tell him uh, the, the the Lova has to pay back in 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 Bainanus. But really, that's a minor distinction between the as you said the genus and the, and and the species. That's just a, a small variation between the two, but it's not an essential difference. That's what the Rambam will say. And the other people probably would say, no, that, that represents more of an essential difference. Now, that would be a nice far to say. Why would, it, why would Metav then represent more of an essential difference between the two? The fact that the Torah said Metav. So, uh, and in fact, it's going to come out according to them. The the we're going to be lenient on the mazik because you're going to say kesev lametav, right? So you're going to end up being more lenient um, on what the mazik can give, or what the nizak has to accept than than the case of uh, lova. Lova will be more strict. You'll say no, he has to give kesev first. I mean, those are the, you know. But that's another interesting question that we have to investigate, which is the interreaction of these two things, uh, and and the effect of metav, in 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 um, as a separator between the two, because because the way the Rambam, the way it's being presented here, metav and benin is 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 a minor issue between the two. It doesn't reflect uh, or it doesn't indicate any essential difference between the two uh, types of repayment. And we could say, what about can, the other, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you, um, what about the other two forms that were similar to this, paying back the, uh, paying the employee? Ah, very good, very good. Is this good. also going to go with the Ketuvos, Ketuvos logic? Or? No, now, now we have a Gemara about the, the Poel, okay? And Poel, there is an essential difference in a Poel. A, a poel must the, there. Everybody agrees, I believe, that the 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 employer has to now sell his junk and give the poel money. They'll all agree that money is king over there, and, and even to such an extent that the poel that the the employer has to go and and run around and get cash. But there we can understand that's that's a that's a uh, unique case of the poel because the poel actually provided a service. Right. right. So he ha it's almost we said I think it we'll have to make a scale here eventually. Right. Okay. Cuz it sounds but, and it sounds it sounds stronger than this actually. It sounds stronger than the Ksuvas position. Yes. Cuz here it's e e east lazy is a low, you know. That's he has it. Right. Here even the lace lazy who say he has to go out and cash in the 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 the, yeah, the metal right. and give it to him. Okay, so that's the, and and I would say in my in, in where my thinking went a little was that 
the 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 classic case of um, um, classic case of uh, let's say using money, let's say, is in Kenyan. Right in Kenyan, when you buy something, so you have the consent of both parties to go through the sale, right? And then you have what's called tashlumen. That means what the uh, buyer lost, he gained by the money. That means shalom. In other words, everybody shalom. Uh, the 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 buyer gave something away, but he also received an equal amount, and it was done with both of their das. Okay, so so there, that's that's uh, we have all the elements of a perfect uh, transaction. But when we start with the pole, for instance, he's one step down. He did give something to the uh, employer, even though it wasn't a um, an item. It was uh, his work, his service, right? And there was a haskam on both sides. They both agreed that he would get paid for the work done, right? So now he is as close to a normal um, acquisition as you can get. So the Torah says, of course, to give him money. That's th but now when we go steps down to Malva, for instance, the Malva did not necessarily did not want to give the money to the Lova. He did it because of the Mitzvah, but he did it. Say he did it, but he of Shem. He's doing because of the Mitzvah. He doesn't want to give his money away because he's not getting anything back for his money, right? His money, what is he getting for his money? Nothing. He's losing his money and he's gaining nothing. If it wasn't a mitzvah, you'd be crazy to do a thing like that, right? <laughs> right? I mean, you know, give your money away uh, so someone else can use it, and 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 you know, but he has to pay his debts, make money, and you sit there and <laughs> and and don't have your money, right? Uh, eventually, he's going to give you the money back, and I'm even going to make interest on it. So, what did you gain from the thing? You lost, and you gave everything. So that's the big chiddush of of the Torah that there's such a thing as a malva. And it's only la mecha. You have to help your friend out. Usually, the person who's borrowing is not doing it to invest. He's usually doing it because he has no money to pay his bills. So the Torah says, "Have rachmanus on him and give him your money and let him owe it to you back." So there already, we have um, a, a step down because the malva doesn't get anything out of this deal. Well, he gets a loma ba. That's nice. It could be very, very valuable. But as far as the physical item, there's no hashlama, and all he's going to do is get his money back, and he's going to lose all the time that he could have used his money. Okay, so. So he's not getting anything for his money. So now the question is, where does that fit in now? Do you say that, as the Rus says, well, he has a, we have a case that he, the Malva, has a right to say, look, I gave you money, I want money back. And the Lover, if he has money, has to do that. Okay, you can't just give him Subin. He has to give him the money if he has it. Okay, if he doesn't have the money, he to take what he, what he can get, okay. But if he does have money, then, then he has a right to model say, I gave you money, I want money back, okay. Because I gave you something, you gained, and I lost completely. So why should I now lose? Bad enough the Torah said I should give you my money even though I'm getting nothing. But now I'm, I'm, I'm gave you my money and I'm getting suvin, and I'm going to run around and cash it into money. That's, that's not right. So there, the Torah says, "Okay, the Malva he has a right to, to get money back." Now, what about the case of the Zeke? And that's now that, that becomes a very moot point. Of course, the Nizak says, "Well, you know, I didn't want to give you my animal. You took my animal. You destroyed my animal." The Mazik says, "Well, I get anything out of this deal? Do I, did I get an animal? Did I get anything? I got nothing. My animal went wild, and he killed your animal. Very nice. But what did I get?" I got nothing. So if I got nothing, I should be able to give you back the worst stuff. Why not? So the Nizak said, oh, wait a minute. I, didn't, I had no consent over here. So both of them had no consent. There was no consent on the side of the, the Mazik to take the thing. There was no, he didn't want it, and he got nothing from it. And the Nizak, on his hand, didn't want to give it. So now the question is, is this like the normal case of Malba? Or is this... Not the case. Does the Nizak have a right also to say, look, you took my money away. Wait a minute, I didn't take your money away. I took your cow away. Big deal. That cow is equal to money. That's all. So you took my money away. Give me money back. Don't give me Subin. Now I'm going to have to run around and sell Subin. What are you, nuts? You, you come in, you destroy my money, you destroy my property, and now you want to give me junk that I have to run around and sell? If you have money, give me money. If you don't have money, I'll take whatever you can get. But give me money. 
So in that case, those people like the Rambam and the Rivan will say, look, it's just like the Balchov. You took the man's money, give him money back. Right? And the other people like Rameno Tom and all those people will say, well, you know, the Torah says the Mazi, have to figure out as far why, can all of a sudden um, give money or Batalplan. And according to Rapap, even, I mean, according to Rav Hune, could give uh, Kesev or Metav equally, which is not the same as in Malva. And uh, so we have to say Svara why, but that's all in Svara's. We have to say what's the reasoning, but it's a different philosophical stance between the two ways of uh, understanding the, the Gemara. And it really comes down to is there a comparison between the Nazika and the Balchov or not? We agree the Balchov has that right. But is Nazikin equivalent or not equivalent to the uh, to the Balchov? And what are we doing in the Nazikin? In the Nazikin, we're giving the Mazik a... Uh, he doesn't have to give his money. He can give the land, uh, albeit the best land. That's a Chiddush. So we have to think about that philosophical that means. But anyway, we're in our work here, not our work. Alibi was our work. But the work of, in the work of the shach, the beauty of the shach is he takes what seems to be an outlandish position <clears throat> that the earth is going around the sun, right? And he says it's perfectly logical. And we have people that say it. And it really is going to focus on what the point we're talking about now, the, the relationship between Balchov and, and Nizak and be and depending upon whether you hold their equivalence or not, you'll then explain Rev Huna as a equal or or a hierarchical or. And then, as you said, then we'll go to these other cases of Mekachtos and of Poel, and we'll see what texts say, and and then we'll have to understand what the philosophical. Uh, uh, relationship is between those two people and why there should be a difference in, the, in what you can pay back. But that's uh, okay, that's, that's our work. We have a lot of more charts to make. <laughs> but anyway, th that's, that's what the uh, Shach did. He takes the Rivan, he says, look, don't blame this hierarchical or is like, uh, you know, Copernican theory. I'll show you it's an old, you know, an old theory by the Rivan. Who is the Rivan? Did I put him here? Oh, I didn't put him here, I don't think. But he's like a, a 1,000. He's like a very, very early Ashkenaz uh, Tosfos. Here, here he is. Here he is. 1,000 to 1,100. Okay. That's a very early, uh, that's like 100 years after the Rach. I mean, it's uh, the, in my head, the, the year 1,000 is essentially the break between the Babylonian yeshivas and the move to Europe and the Rishonim of Europe, which split, split into the Ashkenazim and the Svartim. So you see the Rivan is very, very old, see, from Germany, he's a very a old. He's contemporary of Rabbein of Gershom, right? Yeah, yeah, time. exactly, exactly the time. I think Rabbein Gershom maybe is a few years younger, okay? I have the chart, and I didn't memorize the chart, but he's a few years younger, Rabbein of Gershom. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but, so the Shach is brilliant in his analysis. And um, he's presenting his uh, his uh, his evidence from the Rach and the Rivan um, that uh, this is a, this hierarchical war. Okay. Wow, and it's only in these few words. Boy, oh boy, oh boy! You see, the, the, these words are are filled. With, they're rich. They're rich, but if you're not involved in the background, it's like I always I, I say, maybe equals MC squared. Any any kid could say that, and they can even explain it to you that energy equals the same. But did they did, did they understand all the the, the 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 mathematics and logic and physics that went behind it? It you know it was blackboards of work there to, to come up with that solution. They only see the result, and they had to have the result in the equation. And that's what's happening with the Torah. It's it's very very deeply rooted, and if you don't penetrate into the literally into the roots of the issue, into the sources, then you don't appreciate the result, which is only like the fruit at the end. You know, you see, oh, I'm going to eat this piece of fruit. I'll say a bracha, 
but you don't understand how that the fruit came from the tree and the tree had the photosynthesis and the leaves and, and this whole mechanism, the DNA, who knows what, that goes into creating that fruit. The fruit didn't just pop out there as fruit. It came from the tree and the tree had roots and it got stuff on the ground. There's this whole process. So the same thing here in, in the learning. The learning has deep roots and you see simple phrases but those simple phrases belie a very, very deep analysis. And, and that's exactly what the learning is, 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 is supposed to do. It's supposed to bring to that depth of understanding. And that's what we're trying to do in Bezat Hashem in this, in this piece, is to bring out the, the depth of understanding that goes into these uh, simple little halachas. You know, sometimes when you do this work and then you read a Mishnah Brewer, you can fall down and say, wow, you realize how carefully he placed every single letter and word. He made a very, very delicate distinction between the Rishonim and what he said, you know. And uh, but if you're not involved in the sources, then you just don't see. You say, oh, so then I put on filling on my left hand. I wake up in the morning and I, I say Modani. Everything is very simple, you know. It's just obvious. That's what we do. But we don't. You know, it's because we don't see the depth. Uh, and. It, Baruch Hashem, it takes the shach to show us the depth. Now, this, as I said, is going to be the platform for the next 400 years of discussion here. You see, the shach is not going to be, uh, he's not going to get away easy. There's going to, he's going to be attacked now on all sides uh, because a lot of things he said seem very clear or, or distinct. Uh, people are going to have very serious objections to what he said. And that's what we're going to do in the, in the, in the subsequent uh, discussion, you know. But can you see that I call it the supernal base midrash. I mean, it doesn't matter when the people live; they're all they're all simultaneously discussing the same information. You know, so if they if they were alive together, they would be talking to each other, okay, and arguing and uh, back and forth exactly these points, and that's uh, that's the beauty of it. Okay, so let's go back here to um, let's go back here to the uh, to the. Uh, Shach. We finished the Rivan? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we finished the Rivan. I'll show you that. Okay. Let's just go. We'll just, yeah. Uh, okay. That was the end of the Rivan. That's it. Okay. He said there's a comparison between the two cases. Notice how carefully he wrote. He mm -hmm. put Malva and Nizik together in his first sentence. Mm -hmm. And because of that, what goes on with the. Uh, with uh, the the Malva, actually, it was just what you said. Really, the Malva, we we have a precedent of Kesev over Metav, since they're equal. It's also happening in in Rav Huna, and the way we do that is with the um, hierarchical or. Okay, and that's what the the uh, and then we saw the Baltus, which disagrees with that and says that there there are two different dinim between Nizik and Valchov. That's what he said. Right, he said there's three dinim, one in the Zikin and the separate din in, in Balchov, and they're not similar. So that's a big machlok was shown him uh, whether these cases are analogous or not analogous, and that will have the ramification, as we see, is whether whether Kesev has a precedent or not. Okay, so let's go back now to the Shah. You see, now the shock said what the Sma said uh, that the Beis Yosef and the tour and the Beis Yosef are all not talking about what you know they're talking about a comparison that doesn't exist between the Zikin and and, uh, and Balchov. So the shock says it's just not true. I'll show you that people hold it. there is a comparison between the two. And really, he says the Rambam and the Machaber is all holding that there's a precedent in the Zikin of Kesev over the uh, over the uh, the Metav, and the Tour. That's his position. That's what the Nimukiyos has said. And the Rambam simple words mean that if you have Tavlin, you pay before car. That's a simple language. Uh, and then he brought this thing from Yisumin, and he explained why the other people went astray because they just stand on old world views of, of the Russian and the Rabbeinu Tam. That's fine for them. But, but he says that, that the Ramam is not, that does not read Rav Huna the way they do. And he reads it hierarchical or. And if you don't want to believe me, I'll show you precedent. Here's the Rabbeinu Hananel quoted in the, in the Sefer Truma. 
uh, no. Gedule Truma doesn't understand Rabbeinu Hananel, I'll explain them to you with a hierarchical or. And I just show you the Rivan. The Rivan says that the two cases are equivalent, and it's a hierarchical or. So, and that's the Rambam. So uh, you just have again pressing old co concepts into a new sheet of the Rambam, which is not new at all. It's the Rivan. It's the Rabbeinu Hananel. It's very well based in Masara. Just because it's not your Masara, you can't be you know hold him. Uh, you know, captive to your, you know, to Rabbeinu Tam. It's, not, it's different, different way of learning. So now he says, <laughs> to go a little weiter, V'chein muchach midivrei harama shehevi ha nemuke Yosef. Now he'll say also, I'll show you that the Rama with a hey that's brought in the nemuke Yosef also is going to show you that there's a precedent in the Zikon of Kesev over Metalton. And what did he write? First we'll see what he says. And then we'll, we'll look at the Ramah again. Shekol ha-poskim pasku halacha kareb papa rev huna b'reidi rev Yeshua. He says everybody's holding like rev huna and rev papa b'reidi rev shuna, right? Well, not rev huna of ours on Tess, which made the hierarchy. But really of Reb Papa, Vikasiv, Haramo, Ayan Sham, the Muchach, the Sforle Haramo Gamken, it's forced that the Ramo also holds, Eche de Isle, Lamazic Metatlin, Vikarka, Kafinin Le Lamesa of Metatlin. When the Mazic has Metatlin and Karka, we force him to give Metatlin. Okay. Now the question is, when I'm going to look at that, but wait a minute. Now, now, this again. This is very subtle Gaonus work. The Rama, the the Namukiosu says that the Rama is learning this from Reb Papa, right? Yeah. Now, how does Reb Papa af interact with Rav Huna? We've been talking about Rav Huna, and everybody's saying that the hierarchy comes from Rav Huna. Right? So now how are you going to get a hierarchy in Repapa? We thought Repapa was an equality of all three. Right? Yeah. So his answer is under the table. I mean, if you understand the depth of his words, he said, I explained this to you already, gentlemen. There is no argument between Rev Huna on Tess and Repapa. When it comes to the relationship of Kesiv, to Karka. They both hold that Kesev has a precedent over Karka. The only machlokus between the two is the position of Metaltalin. Rev Papa holds Metaltalin is equal to Kesev, and Rev Huna says it's a step below. And the, and the Rama is holding like Rev Papa that, oh, excuse me, this is not true. This is going to be a problem because the Rama we're going to have a problem. I have to look inside. It's true that the Ramah, you see, the Ramah is going to learn different than what the Shach learned. Because he's going to say that Reb Papa is going to hold that there's a hierarchy in Reb Papa, a triple hierarchy in Reb Papa. Okay? The way he learned the Rambam, not the Ramah, the Rambam is that Reb Papa holds there's only a double hierarchy. That means Kesev is equal to Metaltlin and Metav is one step lower, right? And Rev Huna held that there was a triple hierarchy, right? That's how we that's how we learned the Rambam. And the Rambam pesachs like Reb Papa, which means it's a double hierarchy. Are you with me on this? Um, okay. But he's but the but the Rama himself is not going to learn like the Rambam. He's going to hold that there's a triple hierarchy even in Reb Papa. Now the question is now what will the Rama say in Rev Huna? <laughs> say? Right. Because he has to be holic, obviously. Has to be holic. So he's, he must flip the order somehow. No? Well, 
He may just say, he just may, he may learn, I'm just throwing out a possibility, Rev Huna the classical way of an equal or, and say it's Rev uh -huh. Papa that holds hierarchy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he gains by that, you see. Then he gains by not having a hierarchical or, which is strange, and he pushes everything into Rev Papa of a tri triple hierarchy, right? So he'll gain on that point, because he, he won't have to set up Rev Papa as a hierarchical or. Right, but uh, let's look at what the Namukyo uh, says about the Rama. Okay. Wow. Yep. Okay. So you read a little. This is we read this once before. We read it again now in a different light. Now that we're a little more educated. This is Namukyo Okay. So Yoshiv. So Baba Kamazan Yashir Kra Yasirahu. Oh Yasirahu. It's an extra pass. Yashiv is a is a uh, s an extra extra word. Okay. Yeah, it's an extra word. Because I wrote the passage. Balo abor yeshalam kesev yashliv libalav. He should have just said he's going to say in one second. Should have said balo abor yeshalam kesev libalav. What's this extra word? Yashiv. Right. And that's what he says. Go ahead, read. Uh, yeah, that because because it is written. Ah, mikdei, ha, the mikdei ti balabor yeshalom kesev, because it says that the owner of the um, pit here of the hole, yeah, the owner of the hole should pay with money. Yashiv, lamali, lamali. Why do I need it? Right, it could have just said Baal Habor Yishalam Kesev. It should have said ah, Baal so Habor Yishalam Kesev Li Baal Love. Right, right. Right, Yashu doesn't add anything. Right. So Leima Yishalam Kesev. Ah, Leima Yishalam Kesev Li Baal Love. That's what it should have said. Exactly. But no Baal Yashu, and I don't need the word Yashu. Right. Eila Rabo Shava Kesev. So the reason it's there is to include uh, equivalent of money. That's the Subin. The Mashma Kol. The Mashma Kol Hashavos. The word yashiv. Implies, well, oh, no, it doesn't. He's saying that afilu subin implies all forms of equivalence, since it's the worst. Well, I think the chap is that when you say yashiv, it means anything you return, even subin. Okay. In other words, he's trying to explain how do we get subin out of this yashiv. That's what uh, he's trying to explain. Shavis, right. He says, call a Shabbos. He just says, Yashiv. We always say, when a word is unbound, when it's not diminutive, when it's not uh, reduced in size, we always say it means the most expansive, right? So by using the word mm -hmm. Yashiv, it means you can return anything you want, okay? Or else it would have had to say, Yashiv Meitav or something like that, right? Okay, so that's just how we got, right? And he says... Yeah. Everything that uh, he can give that is movable is considered metav. Yeah, forget that, okay. So what is he saying? He's saying... You can give all different types of metaltal. Now, what does it mean? And the halacha is like Rapapa Rabhunu, Pasko Halacha, Koloma Forshing. The halacha is like, according to Namuka Yosef, is like Rev Papa and Rabhunu Bered Rishu. We don't know what that means. We don't understand the import of that yet until we read the whole piece. But it's. it's is he, is the, it, so wait, Rabhunu here is Rabhunu. It's not it's, it's well, here's again, we have a problem. We have a problem here. Because the physical words say Rev Papa and Rev Huna. Right? Yeah. So I read automatically, because again, my mind is filling in blanks. I mean, oh, he means Rev Papa and Rev Huna Braid Rev Yeshua. Right. But he didn't say that. So it's a question. 
we'll just leave it as that's probably what the dollar is going to talk okay. about okay but we'll leave it open as a question but please, if we push in the word Rev Huna Red Rev Shua and he just left it out because it was a shorthand then it's there or, or if he says Rev Pop and Rev Huna then maybe they don't disagree on the point okay. that uh, you can give even Subin that was never an argument okay the only question is other relationships but okay that's interesting uh, inference of this language again. They write very carefully because of her Rama. Here it is. Here's the Rama with a hey. Because of her Rama. Now I added the word Benesikin. Okay, he doesn't say. He, it's not in the text. I should put in brackets because. But it is okay. We'll see. What does he say? So, our Demotzi Yahiv Leia Filusudin. When we uh, when we find that he has to give him even subin, yeah, you know what that means, yeah. Ha honey mele. Uh, honey. When we say that he can give metadal and a few subin, honey mele. Yeah. These words are honey mele. Echa de lesle lemazik suzi. These words uh, are applicable when he does not have, or the mazik does not have money. Right. But if he does, if the damager does have money, so it's only appropriate for him to pay back with money. No, he can't. He actually, he can't push on the nizak except ah, money. He, it's not. He's not found to, to push on to the to the nizak anything except money. The only thing he can pay back with is money. He can't push on. He can't give him subin. Okay. So clearly, the Rama says here, as far as in the Wuki Yosef quotes him clearly to say that if you if the in the case of nizikin, if you have kesef and Metalpolin, you must pay with kesef. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what he says. Now, second, this is all the Rama. Vehuwa din. Vehuwa din l'bal chov. Right, the same exact relationship. So here again, we see that not only was the Rivan, but the Rama is making a equivalence between these two cases. And as you said, which I think is very, very accurate, I believe that's true, that the starting point is going to be Balhov, and that's going to push into Nazika. But that already we can discuss. I mean, that, but that looks like what's, what's going to be happening. But here, at least, we see an equation between the two, unlike, yeah. unlike the, the Tosfos and the Rush and all these other people. The Rama is also making an equation between the two. Okay, now. Vagabi Mekachtos, and another case that has a payback. The Havale. It is to him. Yeah, the Moha who. He's like a robber. He's like a thief, right? Uh, right. So yeah. Uh, twenty-four. Is it a number? Oh, it's yeah. the number. Okay. The uh, Oh, it's one of twenty-four avos nizikin. Remember, talking to Sham Kessel, my whole beautiful chart, how it yeah. moves all around. Good. Right, right. So it's uh, so mekachtos is belongs to one of, is one of these twenty-four categories. He he wants the whole. Now here's another equation. You see everything. The Ramchal says that the basic functioning of the mind is called dimin and hevdel, comparisons and differences. Okay, my friend Aaron Marcus talks about nodes and links, but it's the same thing. Uh, a hekish is is a, is a syllogism as we call it in Hebrew is a link. So either things are equivalent or not. If they're equivalent, then what happens in one happens in the other. If they're not, you can break them apart and say that they're distinctive. So then you can't move from one to the other. Okay? So here he makes a equivalence between Mechachtos and Goslin. 
it's a new relationship, right? Because you would think Mechiktos is maybe a Balchov. What what happened? He he overcharged someone, and now uh, he we sold him a cow that was supposed to be for plowing, and it turned out to be a gorer. So now he has to give his money back. Well, I didn't steal from you exactly. I mean, uh, you know, I just gave you the wrong stuff. But here, the Rama makes an equation between the two. Very interesting. And he says Mechiktos is has the dinner of Goslin. Because you stole his money, he didn't want to give you the money for a for a uh, for that cow. He wanted to give you the money for a, a plowing cow, not a. So you you stole his money. Okay. Now once you're in the category of a thief, so then you're in the category of the twenty-four avos, and you have to pay back Maytab. You see, that's very interesting. Because the 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 Tosfos did not say that. He said the Mekak Tos is just like a Balchov. Okay, but here there's a new relationship being drawn by the Raman, saying the Mechitos is like a Goslin. If you're like a Goslin, you have to pay back Metav. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there, Amrin and Beper Kamocher. And what is it again? Perik Mocher? It's a. Uh, that's a that's a Perik. A Mocher Peros. It's a Perik in Baba Basra. Right. Okay. We didn't do that, Gemara. That's again. Eventually, we're gonna have to get. We're gonna have to uncover all the roots of these. Uh, right. If you don't cover all the roots, then you can't see the, the 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 fruit. The fruit is only a, a result. It lies in any good. Right. Every syllogism. It's the premises that lead to the conclusion. So if you don't go back to the premises and investigate them, then you don't know. You don't know if your if your result is correct or not, right? Your conclusion is correct or not. But okay, there in Perakamoche Peros, what does it say? Gabe. Gabe Mocher Shor Lechavero, with respect to somebody who sold who sells a bull to his friend. Right. It turns out to be a uh, agora, not a plower. What does it say there? This is a quote. Uh, the last part I understand that he should pay for the bull with kesef with money. And the first part is if he leka is that if he doesn't have or yes, if he doesn't have with which to pay, if if the mocher doesn't have money to pay back the. A buyer. Uh, so, so the Gemara says, the Lishkol Torah, let the buyer take the bull in exchange for cash. Mm -hmm. In exchange for cash? What does that mean? Uh, in, in, in substitute, not saying it's a substitute for cash. Uh, in substitute, ah, right, in place of cash, right. Okay. Right. So if you don't have cash, then you can give him a Tautalan, like the bull. Mm -hmm. Right? So he's saying that also in Mekachtos there is a um, hierarchy which starts with Kesev and then goes to um, Metatlan, you see? Because it says only if you don't have money, let him take to the book for money, right? Just, you know, which means that he can give Metatlan only after money, that's what he's going to say. Ubehedja min and sham. Awesome. And clearly we said over there that what? The Isle Zuze Lomatsi Amar Li Amar Le Shakel Torah Zuze. If he has Zuze has his money, right, and he cannot say Take uh, the bull instead of money. Take the bull instead of money, right. Right. So he says over there, you see, in Mekartos, it's like Balchov. Because and, and it's like Nazikan. They're all one, right. they're all similar. Very systematic for him, right? He has one systematic view of all of them. Exactly. He holds all these are essentially the same case. There's no even though there's distinction between Maitab and Bainanis and all those are not called differences that make a difference. Those are called right. Mikri differences and not Atsmi differences in our right. Lushan of the yeah, they're just accidental, right? He, he has a, a green eyes and he has blue eyes, but it's, but it's the same a man. They're called accidental differences, that's all. They're not the difference that makes any difference. Yeah. 
okay and that's the sheet of the Rama is going to be consistent all the way through okay this is of course fights the Rabbeinu Tam which makes distinctions okay so he's gonna right then he's gonna have to learn these root cases differently but okay we're reading him Vagabe Balchov Nami Okay, he wants to bring another proof that Balchov, there's a precedent of cash over Metatlin. And we didn't get into that case too, but basically we said that's the case where the Malva comes to the Lova and says, give me my money. He says, I don't have any money to give you. He says, well, what's all this money on your table? He says, oh, that belongs to a guy. I'm just watching it for him. Okay, but Masha from there, he had a right to demand money. Right, that's what he wanted to say. So that's another proof that in Balchov he has a right to demand money over Metatlin. Okay, now we'll go a little further. I I add the word in the second. So we infer, there's an inference here from the language, uh, from all of this language? Of from the language, v'chein mashma milishma damrin and hacha, and that's Reb Papa's case. Okay? It's also mashma that there's a precedent of Kesev over Metaltlin from how Reb Papa presented his analysis. Let him spell it out. Uh -huh. I see. Okay. Time and machine. Ah, I see. Okay. Time machine. The e no misdavan hacha misdavan hacha. That if we uh, the reasoning is that it's from the from his statement that uh, if we don't sell it here, we're going to sell it elsewhere. The shamin and mene. They all spell it. We hear from this tom that was given this reason. Okay. That every that everything is in order to pay the nizak. That everything is really there in order to be transferred into money. In other words. Uh, this was a hard line for me. In one second, we hear from this: the kule milta dizamune le the nizak, the may nizikin, the may. One second, I had, I, I had a way to read it. I put a there's dot no there, dot but I, I put the I put the dots mm -hmm. in. There's no dots. There's no. I tried to help okay. myself. Oh, okay. There's no dots in the text. It's just a question of uh, okay, okay. how you read the text. Okay. The kule milta the zamune le lenizak. The may. Nizik or dummy Nazikan, I don't have dummy a, is, a, is, is also where dummy is a is, dummy means to compare it's compared to or it can mean comparison like dimion. Dimion or it can mean money also sometimes. So one second. The Kule Milta Dizamune Le Lenizak Dame Nazikan or Dummy Nazikan Bazuze. Oh yeah, yeah. I had this reading. I should have written it in. It's not so simple. Um, his, he wants to bring a proof from the Lushan of the Tom of Rapapa when he said that Metaltalan can be sold in every place. That's, a, that's mashma, that money has a precedent over um, over Metaltalan. Why the Shmini and Lile the Kule Milta the Zmune Le Lenizak Dummy Nizik and Bazuze Well let's read the S for cave in the May High Timahu since this is the reason we'll have to go back I don't have to get that Mamela Mashma the Ki Isle Lamazik Zuze Machayev Litetle Zuze what, what he's saying here, I'm just going to read it grossly, don't have to translate more accurately. He's saying, look, what was the, what was the Tom of Reb Papa? That Metaltalin is better than Karka, because it's more Mizuman, the Kesev is more Mizuman, 
right? He can get the Kesef easier than the Karka. Mm -hmm. So we hear from that that whatever, wherever you can get the Kesef better has a precedent. That's why the Metaltalin has a precedent over the Karka, because you can get the Kesev easier. So certainly then, the Kesev itself should have a precedent over the Metaltalin. Right. Now, how do you read that in the words? The Shemimina, when they dekule milta de zmune le le nizak, de me... That means, that's Hasmana. Hasmana means that is uh, available. Okay. It's available to them. anything that's more available to the nizak to cash in, to, to convert to money is, is, is has a precedent. Money means it's uh, like a mizuman. It's ready, right? In, in, in modern Hebrew, cash is called mizuman, right? It's it's uh, it's um, or mizuman or mizuman. It just means ready, right? It's uh, yeah, ready to hand. It's ready at hand already. Available. Available. Okay, so Kule Milta de Zamunele Lenizak, I think it means everything that is more available to the Nizak is similar to money. Dame Nisko Dami Nizika Bazuze is is comparable the damage is compared to in damages it's compared to money. In other words, right, that just like, in other words, everything is being compared to money, and that's why the, 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 the physical stuff that you can move around quickly and get your money back is more comparable to money, and that's why it has a precedent over Karka, right? That's why Karka is out, because it doesn't have that ability. So he wants to learn from there that, that everything that's closer to money has a precedent, that was the distinction between Metaltal and Karka, and certainly should be the distinction between Kesev and 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 uh, Karka because uh, uh, Metaltal. I'm sorry, because Metaltal is one step away from the money. It's true that you'll get your money, but you have to go to that other town maybe to get it, right? So it's one step less than the Kesev, but it's one step higher than the Karka because the Karka may not have any. You may you, you the local customers may not be here, right? And it's only sort of a booby prize that the Torah says give metav just to increase the chance that you'll be able to sell it, right? But it doesn't ever really come up to the amount of customers that you can get with movables, okay? So exactly how to read the words, the kule milta de zmune le le nizak, dame nizika bezuze. I think that means everything that's at hand to the Nizak that is comparable to Zuzi. I'm not translating well, but I, I, I understand the sense, but I'm, I'm not yeah, translating. Yeah. No, it makes okay. sense. It's similar to, to money. It's similar to money, I mean, right? It's yeah, it's going along with, with the whole idea. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The cave in the Mihai Taimahu, and since this is the reason that separated uh, Metaltalin from Karka, that is more Mazuman to get your money, right? So Mamela, Mashma, the Ki Isle, Lamazik Zuze, then you must give it because that's the most. There you don't even have to translate it. In other words, right? right. The, the difference between the, the right. Mazuman and the, and the Karka was that it was more translatable into cash, but the cash is the best of all. So it's mashma from the way that Rep. Papa was talking that we have a hierarchy. Okay? So, now I don't, again, there's another problem here. I don't know where the Nemukios have stopped with the, uh, with the, um, with the Ramah or not. I have a funny idea that, that he stopped bef before the Spalchov Nami Mashma. I have a funny idea that's where he stopped. Okay, because the, 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 um, the Rama already brought his, I mean, he made a statement already that just in the Zikin we have a problem with Talton. The same din applies to Balchov, right? Okay. And also to Mekachtos. Now here he says, Vagabi Balchov Nami Mashma. That seems to me that that's the, the Nemuki Yosef talking. He's saying, don't think that what the uh, Rama said 
that in Balchov there's a present of Kesev, I'll show you that's 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 mashma, it's true from the Gemara and Kesuvis. Although he didn't bring it, but that's probably where he learned it from. In Kesuvis, we see that the 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 guy can demand money, okay, and also the, you, it's also mashma that there's the precedent of Kesev over Subin from the Svara of Rapapa, purely in Svara, since the whole Svara that made the Metaltalin better than Karka was its ability to turn into cash, so then cash itself should be the precedent. Okay? Uh, the first choice. Okay? Vechain hadin babalchov. You see, I'm, I believe it's all in Muka Yosef talking, because the Ramad just said the first sentence, okay? And he says, Vechain babalchov, doho gora koho de malva bebeinness. Now we have to analyze this a little too. He says the same. Din as Nazikin will fall on Balchov, which is a present of a Kesev. Why? Because the strength of Balchov of the uh, uh, of the Malva is weaker. When it came to the Nizak, he had the strength that he could demand Metav, but the Malva can only demand Beninus. Now, what is that? He hasn't explained his point. Have Mishum, the, and the only reason why the Malva uh, can only demand Beninus and not uh, Edis, Have Mishum Chashasha Shema Yichpot Tzviel. And I listen to the Svar. This is like pure Svar here. The reason why the Torah said he can't get Edis is because. What he'll, there's a hashash that maybe the malva will show some cash to the lova, right? In because he knows if if you get in other words the malva wants to get the idis of his friend, so he'll entrap his friend to getting a loan from him. He'll know his friend won't be able to pay it back, and he'll end up getting the the uh, idis, right? So the Torah said to prevent that ex, uh, exploitation of a poor lova, the Torah said the malva can only get bainanus. That's the svar that he says. We had other svaras. In other words, the, really the case of Balchov and Ezekiel are equal. Even the Balchov should get the Yiddish. And the only reason he got pushed back to the Torah, pushed them down to Bainanus, is because we're afraid that Malvos will misuse the the, the Idis and entrap a lover to get, lose his land. So we said you only get Bainanus, right? And he says, lo This reason of the unscrupulous Malva it only exists in Karka. Why? The low matzila bruchele. Karka, you can't move around, so the malva can try to entrap the lova to get his karka. Of al metaltalin vizuze, but when it comes to metaltalin and zuze, the lekele meima lahai taima yafi kocha. But when it comes to metaltalin and zuze, where the malva can't ex exploit the lova, because the lova can always sell his. Uh, metaltalin or zuze, you know, you can always get rid of it, you know, real quickly. So then the Torah was not mockpeed on um, giving the best uh, metaltalin, for instance, or, or excuse me, that's true. Of Alba Malta, Zuze, the Lake Lame, a high timer, Yafi Koach. When it comes to, exactly, when it comes to metaltalin and zuze, the Torah gave. Um, the power to the mazik. When it came to land, it diminished the mazik. Excuse me, again. When it came, the malva's power was diminished when it, only when it came to land, and not when it came to metaltalan and zuze. Okay, because it's a special thing that he may try to rip off land, which is fixed and it's easy to rip off. But uh, when can it came can to you explain that again, what does that mean that it's I'm not quite getting it again. What do you mean? How, how does the ripoff work? The ripoff is like this. Amalva sees that this poor guy has a beautiful piece of land, right? 
it is land, fantastic. He's a poor guy, he can't work too well, but he has a beautiful piece of land. So he says, I'm going to get that land from this Slova, because this guy is a schlump, and he always you know, needs money. I'm going to go over to him and say, here's you know, $500 worth of green cash. Wouldn't you like to borrow it? I'd love to lend it to you. So the poor Lova Umlal, he says, oh, I need money. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll loan it. Then when it comes the next month or three months later, hmm, please give me my money back. The Lova says, oh, I don't have it. I don't have it. So the Malva says, well, then give me your best land. My best land. You're going to take my best land. Yes, the Torah says I have a right to make up. So the Torah knows this unscrupulous Malva that will try to entrap the Lova. And they say, no, Lova, you can only get paid in this land. So now the excitement of, the, of, of, of getting rich quick with the best land falls down. And uh, he'll, he'll trade with the Lova and, <laughs> and only give him the money when he has to give it to him. That's the entrapment svara here. So he says that, that the Torah was makel in uh, Balchov, right? It weakened the power of the Malva in Balchov, which is a separate, which is a separate reason. If they gave him metav, it would give him t too much temptation to try to rip off poor people's land. Mm -hmm. So that's why it diminished it. But really, as far, but really the two cases are, are totally equivalent. They're really totally equipped. The question of Malva and Nazikan. Well, uh, but the, the ripoff can't. The ripoff can only happen in the case of Malva. I yeah, mean, because Nazikan Nazika is an accident, right? Exactly. Right. right. It's an accident. I mean, my cow gets lost. I mean, to, to, to think that a guy is going to send his animal into the field to get the best of the field, and they're like. Oh. So what he wants to do here is to show that there, the to uh, diminish the distinction of metav and bainanis. That distinction is is not an essential difference to split the law of Nazikin and Balchov. Okay, you'll say, wait a minute, Nazikin can get kesef first. You know why? Because he even gets metav, right? That's why he can get kesef first, right? So he says, relax. There's no, there's just a, really the Balchov also should get metav. But we have to put the brakes on him because he may be unscrupulous, and that's why you give him bainanis. But really, there's no essential with two the two cases, right? So when it comes to uh, getting money first, or even metaltalin first, we don't have to worry that he, that the Malva is trying to rip off. No one's going to rip off money or metaltalin because, first of all, there's no guarantee you'll ever have the money of the metaltalin because the guy could just sell it, just you know, sell it immediately to someone. There's no shibud in in, in metaltalin. There's no there, there's no lien on metaltalin. There's liens on land. So so there's no reason to to um, in metatalin and kesev to say that you know the the malva wants to rip off the metatalin and kesev of the of the lova that poor lova it doesn't happen but in land there is a reason so that's why the Torah diminished his power in land but really they're essentially the same case paying back money and and really he should also get uh, he should also get uh, uh, it is, but it's just uh, we push him down because the Torah is afraid to take advantage but as far as kesev and um, metaltalin, that he has a right to get before. He has yafe kocho. In other words, the 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 the, um, the mazik has a right to demand. Remember yafe kocho. What is yafe kocho? Means a mazik has a right to demand metaltalin or zuze. He can't demand mate of karka. But he has a right to the man Metaltal and Zuze because there there's no Chesron on his part. We don't have to protect the Nizak from, from any unscrupulous mal, uh, uh, Malva, right? So what he did here, in a sense, is level the ground between Nizikin and Balchov. Because if you're going to come up and say to him, but wait a minute, Nizikin, there's a reason to get precedent over Kesev because he even gets Metav. And the Balchov, there's no reason to give him a precedent of Kesev. Right, because he only gets bainanis. 
So he levels that distinction and he says, no, it's really the Baal Shof should get Yiddish too, but it's just a special uh, uh, reason why the Torah said he gets banned in this, just so he wouldn't be scrupulous. But as far as, as uh, but it doesn't mean that there's any essential difference between the two cases. When it comes to, to money and the metatlin, where there's no uh, chashash, you know, doubt, you know, worry about uh, an unscrupulous malva, so there, of course, he has a right to have Yafi Koach and to say, I want metatlin or, or Kesev over Karka. You see what he did here? Wow, all these moves are very, 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 I mean, they're, they're very subtle and logical and, and planned, you know what I mean? Because these are debatable, this is the whole debate here. The whole debate here is between the equality or inequality between Balchov and Zikin. You see? The Tosfos will, will claim there's an inequality. All those people are going to claim that there's, there's a, a grand difference. And even, even if you find me cases that Balchov, there'll be a present of money over, over, over Karka, for instance, that'll have nothing to do with Nazikin at all, the other people will claim. Nazikin is a different ball game. Whereas the people on this side who are going to make the equation between the two and say both Nazikin and Balchol, if you have a president of a Kesev over Metatlan, are going to have to diminish the, this distinction, right? And make it a Mikri and not an Atzmi distinction. And, there, okay, and these guys are lining up again with with the Rambam and with all those other people with that's... The Rambam. Right, right, right. And, and the Rivan, and almost, it's going to be a slight difference. It's going to be a slight difference here. We have to keep pushing through here and, and uh, let's just do, read the third part. V'chein Nira, he says, I'm sure this is the, Ram, uh, the Nemuk Yosef's writing. It's not the, uh, it's not the Rambam. The Rambam just made the, the for opening moves. He says, V'chein Nira, the e isle metaltalin v'ara, if he has metaltalin in land, lo matzi yehiv ara. He can't give land. See, just like the Shach was saying, if you have, and the Rambam was saying, if you have metaltalin in land, mm -hmm. you can't right. give metaltalin. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, lo matzi yehiv ara. You can't right. give him land, right? Why? The metaltalin a difetve because metaltalin is better than land. Why? Lahor time it does mune lezuze from the reason that money is more available, right? Yeah. Why? Lo tzrich lachrize alayu. In metaltalin, you don't have to put up a sign for sale, and you know, what I mean, accept buyers and things. You just get the metaltalin, you go to the shuk, and someone's going to give you money for it. With land is a whole big deal, putting up signs and interviewing people. And it's a whole big process. Vakro kinami mashma lahedje, the cursive, and the pusik also is almost explicit about showing us that metaltalin is better than karka. Because when it came to malva, it said, bechutz mode. The malva has to stand outside, etc. Lotovo el besol avot. He's not allowed to come into the house of the borrower to collect his money. The stama de isle bias mashma. So look what the pasuk said. He's not allowed to come into the house of the poor person. Mashma, the poor person has a house, right? So the poor person can pay with metaltalin, even though he has karka. And the mazik right, right, right. can't take. Uh -huh. Can't take. Uh, excuse me. Well, excuse me. The mazik can take the metaltalin over the karka. That's what he wants to say. He's saying he can't take the karka. That's the point, right? Exactly. He can't take the karka. Yeah, lomatsi. That's the first line, right? Lomatsi. Exactly. Right. He can't. That's okay. A, that's a nice proof. Okay, it's a proof from the Pesukim. I mean, you see that they're yeah, yeah, they're. Nice yeah. You see, what, basically, what's going on here is a svara of a comparison or an essential difference, and then siatas uh, proof, some clear Gemara that says it, but there's very strong indicators. Mm -hmm. You see, right. so they're, they're, we're arguing in indicators. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it seems as if the Torah and the Pesukim are saying it. Why are they, why are they jumping to such, uh, you know, uh, grandiose proofs? Because they don't have, if they had a simple Gemara, they would do it. 
Right. So they're trying to bring... It's like, a, it's like a desperate measure to go all the way back to the psukim of the Torah. Exactly. nothing in between. <laughs> right. I mean, if you had a simple text, you'd use a simple text, like you have a case, just sing a case. So, so you see, it, it, it's, it's really, a lot depends on, and that's why the people talk of, of the push and the shove. In other words, when you don't have a clear text, you're going to have to look for indicators, okay, either from Pesukim or from other cases. But basically, you're going to be left with indicators, and then a svara is going to push it. You're either going to think in svara, there's no essential difference between the two, and there's a lot of indicators for that, or you're going to say there is an essential uh, difference between the two, and there's indicators for that. Because if it was obvious one way, then there'd be no debate here. It would be an ob no, everyone would agree with everyone else. So it's a gray, it's a gray zone of which way do you go, and it's it's a value judgment. It's very, very exciting. It's a value judgment here. They're, you know, they're not just repeating what the Gemara says. It's not a, uh, it's not just a, you know, a compila compilation of the rules like the Ramam. The Ramam just didn't look through all of Shas and make a nice categorical organization. It was a judgment that he made on how to read the cases. And then, of course, he categorized them. But he, his categorization was after a judgmental evaluation of the material, and he said. I'm the last guy that knows how to evaluate. All you guys are dreamers, you know, uh, and it's getting worse all the time. So I better, I better do the evaluation and show my results, so people will leave, know what to do, than leave it up to you, your 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 imperfect evaluation of the material. Now, what the shach did was to now fill in the rationale of the Rambam which is a very, very important step. And that's really what a lot of people do when they, since the Ramam didn't do it, someone had to do it, and they stand up and they do it. But uh, you see there's a, a, a very, very powerful debate here between the people who want to push the Ramam into the old world view and the people that want to push the Ramam into the new world view. And there's, there's pluses and minuses on both sides here. There's gains and losses on both sides. And, and that's what we're trying to evaluate, what exactly is the gains and losses on both sides. And really as we ricochet this, this, uh, this piece for the next 400 years, they're going to be talking about the, the power of the, of, of, the, of, of the forces, which way, this way or that way, and trying to bring proofs either for or against, you know, pushing the Ramam into old world think or new world think. That's going to be the name of the game here. You know, but you see the Rambam. I mean, I read that the Rambam wanted to write his sources, but again, as I told you, you know, the, you you wouldn't be able to pick up the book as it is. It's around so what, six volumes, and if you were to write all the sources, it'd be gigantic, gigantic work, which he could have done, and he wanted to do it, but uh, it would have been it would have lost its functional uh, utility, right? Because then we'd be so much involved in the give and take that no one would know again. They get all. Uh, you know, involved in the in the, in the analysis and and not get to the conclusion. He wanted a book that people can use in order to know what the proper. I mean, after all, you have to admit so it's either on your right hand, your left hand, between your eyes, top of your head. You know, I mean, it, there is a tzuras a mitzvah. It's not just uh, you know a nice uh, intellectual study here. So he wanted to get to the point that this is how the mitzvah is done. Now, of course. Every move that you make has its pluses and minuses, as we're seeing, and, and our job is to is to see that evaluation. In Bruch Hashem, we have the shach. Without the shach, you have no you have no you have no way of understanding what the Rambam did. It's just my son said because I'm trying to. One of my ideas is that to use this as a demo lesson, right? Because there's so much here in how to learn. There's so much, so much, so much information here on the process of learning, what it is and how it's done. So I, I really would like to to create a, a classic demonstration so that people at least get one piece from the beginning to the end. My son, who is has learned in yeshiva classically, told me, well, this is what they do in 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 in, in the in the yeshiva. They present a an impossibility. And that gets everybody excited because their mind starts thinking, it can't be, it can't be, right? Like the Rambam, how could it be that Metatlan is greater than Karka, right? And they, they present an impossibility, and everyone starts thinking and yelling and screaming, you know, and they're all excited. And then the Rosh Shiva 
explains that what you thought was impossible is actually true. Right? It may be unbelievable, but it's true. And then he proves it. So it's that's what I call the rhetoric of teaching. Okay? Because it gets the people excited. But but and when you're dealing with a group, that's I guess what you have to do. I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. I guess so. Because people don't have the patience to carefully go through the material. They want to read it quick and flash and get a exciting, you know, exciting, uh, like, this can't be, it's impossible. And all of a sudden you find out that, the, yeah, it's true that this, the sun, that the earth really goes around the sun. Wow. Hmm. So you get that wow experience and that unbelievable, you know, new perception. But that's far away from the nitty-gritty work of the of the evaluation here you know so what that, that's what I, I feel is, is is missing because yes you can get the wow experience but you're not really touching the, the the roots of the matter and touching the problem and seeing the greatness of the evaluations because you're so far away you're just saying e equals MC squared wow wow energy equals matter wow but that's very far away from the inner workings of the of of the piece. And as I said, Baruch Hashem. I mean, it, 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 it not not everybody can can do that. I mean, people you know want to move on. I got to move on. What are you moving on from? Do you understand what's in front of you? Do you understand what's what's <laughs> being done here? You know what I mean? You, you just want more information. Okay, you want to be wowed. You know, keep 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 the wow experience going. But but it's but this, uh, this is the wow. This is the real wow experience. Exactly, and that's so, that's what I keep saying. But you know, you can't just tell it to people if they don't go through oh, yeah. the actual work. Then it's oh yeah, that's he says this is the real wow, and I say this is the real wow. And anyway, I get this tastes much easier and nicer, and it's more, you know, accessible. And what you're doing is you're chucking me a cup for weeks and weeks on one piece. You get the same thing over and over again. And, you know, I mean, it's it's just a question of uh, communication. So that's why I say, as far as 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 teaching rhetoric, what can they do except you know throw out these bombastic statements and have everybody go crazy about them? That's a great way to keep people involved. But the real wow is 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 what we're doing. You know, which not many people get to do. You know, they because. They've just, you know, been in a group, everyone says, wow, and they're saying, wow, and it is wow. I mean, and the Torah is big. There's 3,000. We, we, we've been doing this for weeks, right? I mean, okay, we only meet yeah. once or twice a week, but but it takes um, concentration and, and commitment and understanding uh, and the humility to, to realize that, okay, it's going to take you time to understand it, but in the end, it's, you're going to understand. It's just a question of understanding what's at stake, so you just keep reading and evaluating and then you'll finally get the whole picture together and you'll see the pushes in the pull and you'll get the real wow experience but um, unfortunately that's that's not given to people and I wish it were because it's it's a real wow experience when you're involved because it's like seeing the you know like the real thing <laughs> you're seeing the real learning you're seeing what they're actually doing what these big people are doing you know it's it's not like you know they're playing the chess game and you're rooting for the for America you're rooting for Canada you know it's not what's going on it's not you know rooting for the Ashkenazim and the Sparta you're talking about very serious people doing a very heavy analysis of a situation and making very solid conclusions from their premises and they know exactly what they're doing and what they have to do like in this piece over here the Namuki Yosef or anyone holds the the sheet that, that the Nazikin is is and and Balkhov are equal are going to have to minimize this difference of metav and Bainanis because if that becomes an essential difference then the law is going to change Okay, so they know exactly what they're doing. They write very, very carefully and 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 precisely strategic, strategic moves on every point. There's no exactly. There's no, you know. Oh, well, you know. Here's another proof, and here's another proof, and I, I'd like to say it's not that. It's a strategic move, and it's a placing of a position. It's a, and when you see that, it's just fantastic. And we're only really. <laughs> We're, we're only really starting, I mean, you know, in the sense of we're beginning to now sense what's being done, but we have to become 
very proficient in, in, and it really only gets down to Rabbeinu uh, Tom in the beginning because he really set the stage. You have to know the Gemara here in the Zikin, Rabbeinu Tom and, uh, excuse me, uh, Rev Huna and Rev Papa. You have to know that very well. You have to know Balchov very well uh, uh, with this Tolui uh, Mos uh, Benachri. You have to know the Din of Mekechtos very well. Okay, and it's going to be the relationship of those cases, which is what they're really, really handling. Uh, and and then then you're beginning to sense what's what's really what's what's going on in their mind, you know. Okay, Baruch Hashem. So um, that was just to explain <laughs> uh, this line. Was that was that the is that the end of the Namuki Yosef? Uh, is that the end of the Namuki Yosef? Or is yeah, that's the end of the Namuki Yosef. That's the end of Mukiyosef. Oh. oh, no, one second. Is that the end of Mukiyosef? Well, hold on. There's another Namukiyosef here. That's one Namukiyosef, okay? That's the Namukiyosef on our page. Here's the other Namukiyosef, okay? And here, it's the Namukiyosef, not on our page in Ezekiel, but on Mocher Peros. And he talks about, if you don't have money, then take the shore as a payment. Okay, let's let's see if we can, I don't know, time restrictions here, but okay, we have to do this. Let, let, let's leave this off, but if you can remind me, because I, 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 mean, I usually listen to the where we left off, but we have to do this in the Mukiosis and Baba Basra. It's very, very critical. Okay, uh, and once we have those two, then, and this is only to understand the Shach. Okay, who right. wants to really understand right. the Rambam? You know, like Chad Gadio, Chad Gadio. You know, <laughs> that's right. That's exactly like that. That's right. That's exactly. You know, what I mean, so there. Yeah. So, but that, that's what's going on here. You know, uh, so Bezet uh, Next time we meet. Now, now we have already Yom Kippur coming up, right? That's next Wednesday or something. I don't know why it is. That's and right. then we have to, oh, we have, that's right. so, what we, so, and we also have to make uh, sukkah. I know your sukkah is an easy one to make. Mine's pretty difficult. My son usually comes over and helps me. So, but let's, let's, um, uh, but, but wait a minute. Uh, so it's mostly Yom Kippur's Wednesday, I think. I know if you were, uh, well, but Sunday, can we learn Sunday? Wait, what's today? Today is the Thursday, right? Yeah, when is Yom Kippur? When, when is yeah? yeah. Yom this Kippur, Sunday. I think, I think it's two, Tuesday or Wednesday. This Sunday. Yeah, it's Tuesday and Wednesday. So so let's go for Sunday, okay? Yeah. And we'll okay. continue here in the Muki Yosef. We'll go back into the Shach. And, you know, we'll, we'll starting to sense the real the real evaluation here, which is very, very exciting. Okay. Um, have a great week and a good okay. shop. Thank you. And we'll see you, Bezit Hashem, on Sunday. Okay. Call to. Okay. That's it.